folding at home too, which is yeah, uh, proteins uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, like for curing cancer and yeah. yeah. Well, well, it's that's nice probably if you have the boinc. I don't know, is that boink boink Bon uh, uh, bonic? I think it's a touch bonic. Okay, yeah. If you have that, you can just switch back and forth between projects. So. I set up the worldwide community one, which is also like, you know, the childhood cancer research. It has a bunch of different ones under that. So it just splits time between SETI yeah. at home and. Yeah. I wonder how that SETI product project is doing. I think they were thinking of shutting it down at one point because it yeah. was, they were running out of funding and they're not finding anything. And well, so. and that's what I heard too. So that's why I started doing the uh, worldwide community one and it's super yeah. easy. Just, hey, well, I, hey, think, hey, the, switch I think the and, cancer one is, is a pretty good, the, the protein folding is pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Hey, well, I would listen got, to Stephen Hawking on that one. If we yeah. find aliens, they're probably I would oh, listen yeah. to Stephen Hawking on that one. If we find aliens, they're probably gonna kill us, so maybe we should. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to find them. Yeah. yeah. You'd have to wonder what kind of diseases and stuff. Like, you know, exactly. It, it, it would I mean that would be like when the when the Europeans landed in in exactly. North America and Central America just bringing their diseases. So it, awful surprising it didn't really go the other way, right? It was the Europeans who brought their diseases to the Indians and killed them all, but not the other way around for the mm -hmm. most part. I mean, there was that's there were some rare cases, but it it um, it might have just been that it was like decentralized and like everybody is like in their own kind of community and they're not living yeah. in cities where everything breeds and whatever. That's true. That's my theory. No, that's a good one. I think it's, hey, you've got this part of the video. You've got the live unedited edition of Home Gadget Geeks Thursday night, June 1st, 2017. If you're not listening to this or if you are listening to this any other time except uh, 8 p.m. in the central time zone, it means you've got the recorded version on our live page. Uh, I've got some interesting, speaking of the live page, I have some interesting uh, weird update from uh, YouTube tonight. But uh, this is not a, a three-minute how-to. Uh, in fact, we'll go a full hour and some change. So if you uh, if you want to hang around, many of you choose not to, and that's okay. It's, you, you can't give it an hour. It's tough. But we got some live folks, and we have a lot of folks that download this as a podcast. Uh, head over, if you're catching it in any other place than TheAverageGuy.tv, head over there. You can subscribe to it. Find it on any podcast player. It's called Home Gadget Geeks. You can find it. We have it on our own app, all that other good stuff. Head out to HomeGadgetGeeks.com as well if you want to try the app. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. I'm going to actually monitor the YouTube chat tonight, too, because that's been getting some traffic without me. Oh, you know. really? Yeah, it's one of those things. They added chat to YouTube, a uh, pretty good mm. pretty good chat, and I forget to monitor it, and I get questions out there. We've been getting more questions on Saturday mornings, too, on Ask the Podcast Coach. So, um, And every once in a while, one pops up on Spreaker. That's about I think, all I can do. I think Emily's getting me a beer. Nice. Yes. I what is it? Grab another you gotta, one. Yeah, you got to show what it is, Mark. What do you got? I got. I'm doing a summer shandy. This is my summer go-to. So. Well, I wasn't planning on hitting the mic. So this is. <laughs> Tell her to back off. Whitaker. Oh, what is that? It is a uh, product of Belgium. It is a Belgium white beer, and it says "sunshine in a can" on it. <laughs> it sounds delicious. <laughs> is, it, is it crisp and refreshing? It is. Uh, it actually, and this is a compliment. It tastes kind of like a uh, wheat beer PBR. Okay. And I actually, I actually do say that as a compliment. I don't, I don't mind PBR actually. Lopta says he's got some Blue Moon in the fridge. That's my winter go-to. I, I drink Blue Moon all winter long. Yeah, yeah. Blue Moon is where I started, but uh, UFO White is my main go-to. That that beer is. It's like Blue Moon, but like 10 times better. Really? What's it yeah. called? UFO White. UFO it's, White. Uh, it's brewed in Boston and Vermont. I don't know how far oh, it gets down yeah. and whatever. But it's not like a super microbrew or anything. Like it's fairly widely available around here in Connecticut, but yeah. I don't know. I have to check for it. We, we have a pretty good, across the river, we've got a pretty good, well, even here in Nebraska, Hy-Vee. He has a pretty good beer selection. So they do. We will. Uh, High V's kind of a Midwestern grocery store. Mm. So it's um, out of Des Moines, a couple hours away. But but uh, pretty pretty good selection. I went and got a. So we have a place here called Beertopia, and they make they don't give you growlers; they give you crowlers with a C, and it's a big can. It's a big. You know, it's like a big two-liter oh, yeah. can that they can. Two-liter can pour the beer. Yeah, 
pour the beer. It's big. It's just it's huge. It may be a liter. I don't know. Anyways. Oh, does he have one? It's pretty. Is it's he pretty big. No, he's gonna go grab another beer. Oh, okay. So um, <laughs> it doesn't. But you know, they pour it and then they seal the top. And they have a little thing to seal it, but it's not really not meant to be in there very long. You know, you're supposed yeah, to yeah, kind of yeah. take it home and pour it. And I didn't. And it sat in there for two weeks. So last Thursday when we were doing this, I was like, I wonder if that beer's any good. So I pulled it out. Shh, nothing. You know, you, it was oh, just no. syrup by the time I was done. So, um, yeah, I guess a, a growler is about two liters. This was smaller than that. So maybe it's a liter. Maybe. Yeah, I got, I have, I have a growler up there from our local brewery, which is called Two Roads. Um, it's like five minutes from my house. And uh, I actually did a tour there with my work. So like my boss was encouraging me to drink and then like I had to do my shift after that, <laughs> which was strange. So yeah, that was, that was It is kind of weird going back to work. Sometimes I'll do some late podcasts where I may have hit a happy hour at five and then I got to go back in at 10. So it's, you know, you're, you're okay by then, but it's weird because you've been out yeah. and then, you know, you're like, Oh, I got to go. I got to go back and work. What a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, Randy's uh, one of those. Randy doesn't. Uh, Randy can't draw at the chat room. I, I, I didn't. I didn't drink until I was thirty, guys. I, I went. I really avoided it most of. My dad was an alcoholic, and kind of it kind of scared the crap out of me just in general. He was a bad alcoholic, so I just didn't drink till I was thirty. But then I don't know. At one point, I was like, well, maybe I'll try some like you know wine coolers, which is basically two <laughs> percent grape Kool Aid, right? Okay. Yeah, and um. So it's, uh, it's, it, then I, then I was, you know, I started drinking other stuff and like a, like rum is, is super tasty. So we got in that, but then about three years ago, maybe four, when the, when the craft beer movement really got going, I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. And oh man, there has been no looking back. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. No looking back. It's a yeah, scary I, thought. I got a buddy who goes to like breweries just to get, beers to trade on the internet oh yeah like yeah. all of the east coast breweries brew this like the crazy hoppy stuff mm -hmm. that everybody likes and he really likes stouts and there's like no stouts around here so he sends off the stuff that's that everybody is clamoring to get and they're like oh stouts whatever mm -hmm. and he gets all these like amazing stouts that he just absolutely loves and he's just like yeah whatever you know i'll just get rid of this stuff that's it's a good idea know, crazy in demand Hey, chat room, are we switching? Is our video switching okay for you guys? Like when I talk, is it there? Mike, would you count to three for me, Mike? Weaver? One, two, three. Seeing and if it switches to me. Mark, if you would count to three. One, two, three. You guys just tell me in the chat room if that's working. We had a weird thing with YouTube tonight I'll talk about a little bit earlier. So, okay, good. All right. Well, yeah, it's not my favorite way of doing this tonight, but it will have to be. All right. Let's see. Let me make sure I've got this set. Oh, Spreaker, uh, Spreaker, I think, is working okay. One, two. Oh, there it is. All right. I always get five or six out there. So that's good. <laughs> All right. Let me get started. Here we go. This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks show number 312, recorded on June 1st, 2017. Here in Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios here in a beautiful Bellevue, Nebraska. I know, Mike, we've been complaining about rain, but, man, this weekend, Memorial Day, four days on the deck. Mike, I hope you enjoyed your Memorial Day weekend. Did you? Couldn't have been any more perfect. Yes, we spent it all outside hanging out with people and it was just gorgeous. Yeah, it's awesome. Like Nebraska, when the weather is good, which is like three days a year, um, it's the best. Like you just have fabulous, you, just, you have to get outside and enjoy it because it's, it's not too hot, hot. Right. No, it's yeah. going to get hot and buggy. We call it bug a haw. Yeah. And uh, it it's just going to be nuts. But Memorial Day weekend was beautiful here. And of course, we post a show with world class show notes. And we're going to have some good ones uh, tonight out at the average guy. Dot TV. Don't forget, you can also download the mobile app. It's free and available for you. Thanks, Spreaker and LastPass for their sponsorship 
of the mobile. It's, to be honest, with you, it's really LastPass who pays the bills on that one, but Spreaker makes it pretty darn affordable. And so if you haven't uh, downloaded the mobile app, many of you have, but if you haven't done that, HomeGadgetGeeks.com and get that downloaded. Just a reminder, we're commercial free on YouTube in a really weird situation tonight. So I have a live YouTube channel. So I have the one that if you're a follower, I have a thousand subscribers, 1,010 now, I think, on my YouTube channel. But I had opened one for the network, oh man, two or three years ago that just did the live stuff. So if you ever wanted to catch the live video, I had a completely separate channel for that. And yeah, I have 20 subscribers and you know those videos got 30 or 40 views, so to speak. But it was nice to keep them separated. And uh, so tonight when I went to log in, it was gone. Uh, they had shut it off, shut it down, said this weird branding error, like you can't, the, you know, your account's been removed for a branding error or something like that. It was really, really weird. And YouTube's been doing some strange things of late. And, you know, something is afoot at the Circle K, if you know that <laughs> reference. And so I I do not know what's going on, but uh, really, really weird. We are, so we're, we're broadcasting live now into the regular channel, and that's fine. The numbers will all add up. But some weird things going on at YouTube. We're commercial-free both on YouTube now and on Spreaker. And so if you, if you listen to those two channels, you can get all our content commercial-free. Don't forget, then, if you want to, if you want to support the show, hit the Patreon link. TheAverageGuy.tv, look in the right-hand corner. There's the Patreon link. There's the Amazon affiliate link, which supports the Tech Scholarship Fund. Either one of those, if you want to support the show, that uh, that's awesome, and we appreciate what you do. All right. We've got a great show. We're going to talk a bunch about Google uh, tonight, but before we get to that, we're going to meet Mark Prokop. If you ha Mark was on the post show back when Emily came on to do, we did clickety-clack keyboards and... Oh, Emily's going to kill me for not knowing the second thing that we did. I can't remember <laughs> on the fly, but uh, it was super awesome. And I got a chance to listen to her redo those on, on the, um, the story behind podcast that she does. But Mark is the other half of that and is the nerd behind the scenes that makes stuff go. He is the home gadget geek. Yes. For the pro family. Mark, welcome to Home Gadget Geeks. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's good to have you. Tell us, Mark, what do you, what do, you do? Tell us what you can. Tell us what you can about your uh, job and some of the fun stuff that you do. Well, I am an online producer for um, Hearst Connecticut Media, and I run the home pages for our five daily newspapers in Connecticut. Um, the It doesn't matter which ones, but the Connecticut Post is the main one, so ctpost.com. Um, I'm actually on uh, paternity leave right now, which is cool. Um, taking care of Cameron, our our newborn son, and yeah, congratulations on that, by the way. Yeah, thanks. N nice job. I know you didn't do any of the work, but nice yeah, job. well, you know, a little bit. You kicked things off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you kicked things off. It's a good way to yep. put it. Something like that. Yes. Yeah, right on. And you're a musician as well. You got a band. We, we yeah, heard a little bit see, about it from Emily the last time you were on. You can see my drums in the background. Uh, our band's called And Robots. We actually have an EP. Um, and and robot and hyphen robots.com. Um, so you could listen to that, but I doubt that anybody will. We've made two cents off Spotify, Ooh, so that's very exciting. Big deal. Um, it's probably from us streaming it and then Spotify paid us, but you know, <laughs> don't they have things against model, that? Right? <laughs> I'll <laughs> take the 1.9 cents of royalties that we've made so far. So it's gonna be a tough one to split with your uh, with your bandmates there, yeah, yeah. Since I, I paid to put it up, I'm taking the 1.9 cents. <laughs> right, right. You're taking the profit yep. on that one. How, how would folks, if they did want to listen to the music, what's the what's the easiest way to listen to it? Uh, our band camp, which is and hyphen robots. Uh, yeah, that's the, um, that's, that's the main way. Um, people have bought the album, I think my mom, um, and then like somebody else. So uh, it's like five songs. Um, I think they're actually pretty good, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're like they're you know they're rock they're like post grunge I think somebody called it um, I don't know what the label is but yeah, it's, do you have it's a label fine. I mean if I played your music in a podcast would I have permission to do that or uh, yeah go for it I don't care uh, we're not going to no label you. that's going to no scream no 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 YouTube. the um uh they're we're technically distributed by DistroKid which is an online distribution service where you pay 20 bucks a year and then you could submit you know an unlimited number of uh, songs, albums, whatever to all of the music services out there. So like if you look on Spotify it's on there. 
Uh, it's on Google Play Music. It's on like Amazon. It's on iTunes. It's on all that stuff. So, so they, they don't they don't carry in any inherent rights where you you can't. Uh, no, they're they're on YouTube as well, and um, there's an actual service that you can pay for that I did not pay for, where they will monitor YouTube and they'll be like, you know, this is on here, and you'll get a cut of the advertising. But I'm just like. You know, if I'm if I'm making two cents from Spotify, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Randy Cantrell says he'll do an entire show using your music. So sure, go for sure it, Randy. Make sure he'll do that too. So Randy's good in his shows. He's good about that. So if you haven't, if he hears the music, he might not do it. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's great. It's always great to have aspiring musicians, and uh, you know, you do it because you love to do it, right? You guys get together and play because you love to do that. We're, you know, it's a similar podcast here, right? You know, I was looking at our numbers the other day and we're somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred and it's pretty much stayed that way for the last couple of years. We I think I have the best audience in town and it's a ton of fun to get together on Thursday nights and chat about technology. So that's for us. We play I'm sure for you guys in the band, very similar. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we get together, we're practicing, we're gonna do like some live performances and things oh, cool. like that and uh yeah it, it should be it should be cool well keep at it you might hit that you might hit a thread and get popular and you know you never know yeah that's what we're hoping for i i'm a little pessimistic but uh it's definitely fun sometimes it's not about ability it's about availability and so you just yeah. gotta be there when the moment hits so yeah and then sometimes it's just about nothing <laughs> you know exactly yes you never know yeah. you just never know when things are gonna hit i can guarantee you though if you stop playing music nobody's gonna listen to it so exactly you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take that's right that's right so very good well let's dig into tech hey before we're gonna talk about some google some the google home and the new some of the new device and Emily reminded me we had talked about a little bit about this about AI when she had been on here. So we're gonna talk about that, that tonight, Mark. You guys, uh, you guys are using the Google device. We're just gonna kind of just call it that for the rest of the night, so things don't get confused uh, from that standpoint. But before we jump into that, Mike, you had said to me the other day, "Hey, have you are you using SETI at all? You know?" And, and so for for folks who don't know. Man, I, this goes back, my roots in this go back to 1997. Well, and I did preface it. I said, I know it's old tech. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, and interesting. I wonder how many people, of course, SETI is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. It's a program you could run on your computers. I mean, I remember I was running this. I would go into stores like Nebraska Furniture Mart here, and I would, I would install it on all their computers. You know, I would just walk <laughs> around and install it and then hide it so you couldn't see it. And I would attach my account to it so I would get credit for it and stuff like nice. that. Nice. And, and uh, those were the early days, right? And, um, and it was a ton of fun. I don't know if they've, ne if they've ever found anything in the years. So that was 20 years ago. Mike, I'm not sure they've ever found anything with SETI. You had mentioned, though, there's, there are some good programs when we think about protein folding and some of those right. cancer ones that we've done. Those those might be worth a little bit more. How are you, how did you set it up? And if you're a listener, I'd love to hear from you if you're actually using some of these, Jim at the average guy TV, but how'd you set it up? Mike? Well, yeah. So essentially just a two second overview for people who haven't heard of it. So it's kind of like distributed computing, right? You can volunteer your unused computing resources. So your computer, if you have one that sits on all day, but you're not using it um, all the time, it can in the background when you're not using it can volunteer your resources to, compute things for research projects is pretty much the gist of it. So you install this thing, uh, I think it's called Boink, B-O-I-N-C. It all runs through that now. So you get the manager and this runs on Linux, Mac, Windows, runs on anything. And then you pretty much select the project. So you can select the one we talked about, SETI at home and do that. Or there's a, I mean, there's a bunch of these projects. So if you have a passion for some sort of research, there might be a product for it. And there's also this one called, um, it's actually an IBM project. It's the IBM Worldwide Community, no, World Community Grid, sorry. And they research all sorts of childhood cancer and all sorts of diseases, protein folding, things like that. So it's pretty much a program you install. You pick the project that's important to you and you just let it go. So I had the, uh, the kangaroo that Jim and I always talk about I actually took off Windows and put on Linux to play with Ubuntu. And I'm not always on it. I, I want to bring it out and play with it sometimes and try something out. But a lot of times it was just sitting there turned off. So I put it down on the rack, fired up um, the World 
community grid and it's just doing computations there. So it just sits there. And then I was like, hey, well, I also have Raspberry Pi. It's doing, <laughs> I mean, the, the amount it contributes is very it's little. It's great warm. That's, right. that's, that's yeah, what it's, it's all it's doing. So, but <laughs> the reason I did it was it's two very low powered devices. So it's not going to cost me anything extra to have those things on. So you put them in the rack and let them go and you feel good about yourself, right? You feel good that you're contributing to research mm-hmm. because I'm not smart enough to uh, yeah. actually do any research. <laughs> to on do the research. Yeah, to do the research. Yeah. So I'll Mark, let my computer do it. Mark, have you, do you ever do anything like that? Have you, have you contributed in that way? Uh, no, uh, the closest I've ever come to doing any kind of distributed computing was signing up for one of those uh, like Bitcoin community things. Yeah, the and pools. Trying to get some, yeah, trying to get some Bitcoin out of that. And then I was like, oh, this is too hard and I'm not getting anything. So, um, yeah, and I w- weirdly, like if I stayed on at the time that I did it, I'd probably have like a hundred bucks worth of Bitcoin at this point because it's just soared and in profitability yeah, yeah no it has mike and it'll crash again but we just don't know when that's going to be so. i really hope not because i just invested a lot of money into it <laughs> <laughs> did you really more than i'd like to admit yeah oh, so man. we we've talked a bunch about bitcoin on here with with um with edward but uh yeah so it mike uh, when you mentioned that to me it, it's a blast from the past i have run that several times on pcs here and then i end up re-imaging them and it goes away and I don't, right. you know, I don't think about it again, but, uh, some good stuff out there. I think, um, yeah, I said he may be one of those things that's just fun to do. I'm not sure we're ever going to find anybody. If we do find them, Mark, what did you say that? Just yeah. Happy, that they're just going to yeah. kill us anyways, right? Yeah. Stephen Hawking thinks that we should not be searching for extraterrestrial life at all. And he's like the smartest guy in the world. So I want to listen to him. Yeah. Well, there's literally nothing we could do. So say we find them and they're 26 or 50 light years away, even close, right? They're in the next, kind of the next nearest. There's nothing like they couldn't, even if we send them a signal, it'd take them forever to get here. And uh, well, they could have teleportation and oh, that's um, soul eating abilities, and (laughs) you know, all of those. All of those, what if you don't have a soul? (laughs) Well, you know, that's a whole different thing. Well, interesting. There's uh, a joke there that that is not going to be made. (laughs) Let that one go. Um, yeah, well, some interesting technology and I, I, you know, who knows if they'll ever find anything, Mike, uh, on the SETI, but, uh, kind of fun. I don't know. I love those kinds of projects and, and, uh, I love to set them up on other people's computer back in the day and just let them run and get, see yeah. how many points you could get and see if you could be a leader. I love, for me, it's not about what it's doing. It's I want to be on the leaderboard, you know, oh, there you go. I'll be the guy doing that. So if you're currently doing that or you got a passion around it, love to hear about it. Send me an email, Jim at the average guy. All right. Mark, uh, we have you on because of the Google Home, and uh, we want to talk a little bit about We had John Larson on, oh, I'm going to say, I don't know, three, four, five months ago. John kind of previewed or demoed a little bit of his his Google Home. You know, I'm an Amazon guy, so is Mike, and uh, so we kind of use those. I've been messing more and more with Cortana, um, and so uh, that continues to get better and, and interesting with the upgrades. But... Mark, I want to hear a little bit about your infrastructure there. Kind of walk us through what you've got, what you got attached to it, kind of why you did it. Just give us the rundown. Well, uh, I've always wanted like an automated smart home. Like ever since I was a kid, I talked about it. My mom will always remind me every time like she's over and I do something on the Google Home. She's just like, oh, yeah, you, you, know, you wanted that ever since you were like 10. Um, and it's really cool that we have this, you know, technology, like, you know, whether it's, you know, the echo or, you know, Google home or Cortana or Siri, if you're, you know, really down on your luck and you need to use something. Um, it's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. (laughs) I I was taking a drink and I almost died. (laughs) I about choked. (laughs) I mean, you know, I just, I have this box right here, you know, and she's got a nice little. Uh, skirt on um, and she's like a part of our family now which is super weird and creepy um, but also amazing I mean just the idea that I can ask you know Google to play a song out of nothing and it just knows what I'm talking about or if I ask to play an album or anything like that like that's really really cool to me um, and then all the side benefits of it like you know having the hue lights set up and just being like, okay, you know, I want my lights dimmed and I'll tell it to dim the lights and all those things. And I know, uh, echo does all that stuff as well. Um, but my setup 
uh, is unique in that I have a lot of like extra things attached to it, and um, one of the things that I do is uh, like right now I'm in my basement and I'm staring at a very large projection screen, and you can maybe make out like some of the light from the projector up there. Um, and all of my equipment is down here. So I have my computer hooked up down here and I have a PlayStation 4 hooked up down here. And then I have a uh, HDMI 4x2 switch. And the two outputs go through the ceiling to my TV upstairs and then back to uh, the projector. And what I can do with that is I can ask Google Home to switch between the computer, switch between the PlayStation, you know, change the inputs on my TV and like do all of those things um, through uh, a Logitech Harmony um, and a Monoprice uh, HDMI IR repeater, which is actually super cool. And it's something that I feel like a lot of people don't um, set those up. They're just like, oh, you know, I'll figure out something with Bluetooth or I'll you know, run different cables or whatever. But yeah, just this little tiny thing that you plug into your H your HDMI cable that you're running everywhere um, can do all these different things on different levels. Uh, and so all of that different stuff combined with uh, IFTTT when I set it up, uh, if this, then that, um, you know, to switch between those different things. And I can have access like my PlayStation 4 upstairs, which is really cool, even though it's down here. Um, yeah, so I have uh, those different things set up. Uh, it can turn on my air conditioner, which I found kind of weird. And that's not even through, that's just, you know, through the IR, which is also pretty cool. So your air conditioner had a remote? Yes. For yeah. it. So is it one of those, like, those... To, uh... Uh, Mitsubishi units that sit in the it's, wall that has a remote? No, it's like a higher, just a window air conditioner. Oh, okay. um, and sometimes it, it like, it'll pick up the wrong signal. And like, if I turn the TV on, it might turn on. And it's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's strange like that, but yeah. it, it so does work, which is pretty cool. Your four by two HDMI switch also has, I'm guessing IR on it. That's how you're yes. switching that over. Okay. Yes. What brand yeah, is that so, one? Because I've been looking for a quality one of those that would actually be worthwhile. Uh, th it's a View HD uh, Pro 4x2. Okay. I have a little yeah. remote right there. Um, yeah, and so I have uh, I have that set up on those two different things. So I can use uh, my computer upstairs when we were editing podcasts or you know if I just want to use the computer. Like it's pretty cool to not have to like go to an office or something in my house right you know, i just have access to it if i'm in the basement if i'm in my living room uh, i have a bunch of like wireless logitech keyboards um and mice so that i can use it upstairs in the living room just on the couch and yeah it's it's a i, I really like the setup that i have mark i find a lot with the amazon i, I have to repeat myself a ton right it just you know you're you say the device name and then you say something and it didn't hear you the first time or, you know, some of those things with the uh, Google home. Have you had experience? I mean, you, you got to kind of learn. Is it the same thing as the echo or you got to kind of have to say the exact phrase and sometimes say it a couple times to get it to respond or has it been a little better than that? Uh, interestingly enough, I think Google is a lot better at the natural language recognition and anything that's like natively through Google, um, the you know the the voice recognition and figuring out what you're saying is really really good. And the times that I actually do have frustrations are when I'm using the IFTTT that I'm going to call it IFT, uh, the IFT integration, and that has been the main issue because you only have three phrases. So you need to remember what those three phrases are in order to trigger one of those. Gotcha. If it's a native Google command, then you can say it almost any way you want, and it's pretty good at recognizing like what you're trying to say. Do you find? Oh, go ahead, Mike. Well, yeah, because I mean, but actually, 
I found that it depends on what device I'm talking to. For some reason, my Echo Dots have a better understanding rate, I'll call it, than the actual Echo, the big one. So mm. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they improved the microphones just a bit when they created those new devices, but I'm having a little bit uh, better success with those two. Might also be because in those devices, they're in smaller rooms. So I'm probably a little bit closer to those devices than what I am. But I, I haven't had too many problems with those. But you, I have the same problem with Jim on the Echo for some reason. It's it's asking me to repeat a lot. And as a random side note, with Spotify, she lost the ability to play an album. So if hmm. So for we have this one album that Emmett loves. And my mom was the first one to notice it. She said, hey... Uh, your your Echo's not listening to me. I'll ask her to play the whatever the name is album and it used to work perfectly and now it doesn't work anymore and she'll play a random out. She goes, her response is, oh, here's an album you might like every single time. So we've had little hiccups with the with the Echo. How does Google work with third party? Like, okay, so we learned that with if there's three triggers that don't work very well sometimes. What about like Spotify or any connected media? Um. I don't actually know uh, if Spotify integration is even on the Google Home. Well, uh, really? what, I, what I typically use, I, I just read that, that is, that's one of the features that they just announced. Okay. Um, but what we typically use in our house is uh, Emily will use Pandora because she likes you know, the sort of radio stations. Right. Um, but I use Google Play Music, um, and I've been using that before Google Home, that's just where I've had all my music because that was really the first service. It actually came out around when Amazon Music came out. Um, and that was really the first service where it was just like, yeah, just put all of your music on here and then you can stream it at any point, at any time. And I was just like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I don't have to worry about anything. And then what they ended up doing is they give you a six-month trial of either YouTube Red or Google Play Music with buying the Google Home. So I signed up for the uh, YouTube Red subscription because you get the Google Play Music subscription, which doesn't really make any sense, but Google does a lot of things that don't make sense like that. <laughs> so, like Jim losing his uh, YouTube account. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so um, I've been using Google Play Music, and you know the album recognition is like phenomenal and it's really 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 good like it will play like if i say hey google play sidewinder by and robots nice little self promotion there the album sidewinder on google play music and it's taking a second but there it is hey google stop hey google stop there you go it takes the two. It takes the two yeah. times. Yeah. Well, it's just loud. It's loud. Well, I have it on. That's where I have the issue too. When the music is yeah. playing, to get it. But to I'm it. hearing the Google Home is is sure when music is Say, playing. It's really hard. It it is the worst of the three at stopping. I mean, I, yeah. I have found my uh, my Amazon devices. If I say, if I call their name, they immediately stop playing the music. In most cases to hear me where I've heard the Google home is having some challenges with that. Yeah. Uh, I think that this is part of the, this is part of the issue. I'm in a different room. It's right in front of me and it's like blaring. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it really is kind of dependent on, you know, if you, you know, you're in the right space for it. Uh, like Emily will sit on the, the love seat, which is sort of like at an angle away from it. And then she'll get frustrated trying to give it commands. Whereas if I say the same thing from the couch, which is directly facing towards it, it'll be perfect. Yeah. I think all of them have some work to do on their microphones. You know, they've been messing yeah. with it, trying different, you know, the, the original uh, Amazon device was touted for having all these different microphones at all different kinds of angles and all that other stuff. But I still think they um, they struggle a little bit in that in those kind of scenarios to be heard. So, oh, look. and also for the record, I want to say that I played my music because I know that you won't get sued. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> for care. having it in the background. I appreciate that. No, we we do appreciate that. But uh, no, good, good, to, good to promote your stuff as well. Yeah. And, and with YouTube, you never know. They've been they've been kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. screwy from that standpoint. Um, Mark, I am a, I'm, an, I'm I don't have one. I've been thinking about buying one. They've been out a while now. The price hasn't really changed. Do I, if I was going to get one, do I get one now or do I wait for the next rev? And have you heard anything um, about, about that? Well, they just announced uh, a lot of new features for it. Um, and I have a feeling that they're going to stick with this version of the hardware for a while. Um, because as you know, Amazon has announced like four different versions of the Echo. Like, you know, there's a screen now and then there's, you know, the dot and the original one. Um, I don't know if there is a fourth. And that, yeah, it's the look. Enough. I was actually going to dog oh, on that tonight because I just think it's the stupidest idea, but whatever. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it tells you if your clothes are nice. Or yeah, whatever. they're like, here, it's a selfie cam. That's, it's a, it's a yeah. four, like $200 selfie cam. That's all yeah. it is. Uh, so the the price, I think when I bought mine, um, it was $100 instead of $130. Um, so, and they have gone on sale recently to do, to be a hundred dollars instead of 130, but it's, I have a feeling it's not going to get super cheap unless Google just abandons it. And I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I say this as a, you know, former Google reader user who was very <laughs> angry when that was shut down. Yeah. Um, but they're really, really focusing on, you know, the Google assistant and, you know, voice recognition and all of those things. So I have a feeling that it's going to be sticking around for a while. Yeah. And I, I need the ecosystem there, right? Because I, I like the dots. I like not paying full price for a smaller form factor where I don't need it. I literally just need the microphone and a very small speaker. Um, mm -hmm. So until they have those smaller ones, I think I'm kind of stuck in this Amazon ecosystem because I really got used to having the main one in the kitchen that has the really nice speaker on it and the smaller ones in the nursery so that I can whisper to it and turn on and off the lights in the nursery when I'm putting Emmett down to sleep, the bedroom and places like that. So I hope that they come out with the same sort of thing like Amazon did with the smaller version. Now I think Amazon has gone way too far with devices that I don't think are necessary or anyone's going to use, but I would like a smaller form factor model too. That was around 30 to $50. Yeah, I mean, I we've talked about just getting one for the bedroom, um, right. just because that's the problem because you need multiple ones, right? You need, yeah. Once you have it in one room, you get used to it, and you want it throughout the entire house. Yeah, I think the the way that we've gotten around that issue is um, the the main thing that we kind of need to do in not the living room is turning on and off the lights because they're all hue lights now. Right. So. Um, what we've done is we've gotten a bunch of these, uh, which are the uh, dimmer switches. Um, and these are like 25 bucks. And you can put them anywhere. Uh, they're just like a little wall plate with uh, some sticky stuff on the back that you just take off and then you put it there and you have a switch and it comes out. So like I can carry it around and, you know, shut off that light and it's really dark now and then like turn that one back on. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's that's the main use that we've gotten out of it. And I mean, if you have the color hue lights, you know that you want to like change them into different colors. And so like we have one in our bedroom now that we just we can hit five times and it'll go through five different levels of light. So and it'll be five different colors and five different scenes and whatever. So, yeah, that that's the main thing. But it would be nice to just be like, you know, I want to listen to some music and, you know, I'll just say it. To that, but I, I do think you're getting into an area where it's like, you know, my other use case is going to be music, so I'm going to want the speaker. I'm not going right. to want an Echo Dot. So the halfway there, which is just like, oh, I'll just have light switches, you know, which feels like going backwards, but you know. Well, and do you guys works. have Android phones or iPhone or iPhones? I have an Android phone, and Emily has an iPhone. So can so, you use OK Google in almost the same way with your phone wherever you're at? And does it connect? Unfortunately, because I'm on a Motorola Moto X, they haven't updated it to have Google Assistant on it yet. So oh, I haven't okay. been able to do it. And I'm very annoyed at that fact because... But would that be a you know, possibility? Been, can she connect to your Hue yes. lights on the phone? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, I can control it with the phone, um, but I don't have the, you know, like the blank Google to turn right. it on, you know, the yeah. wake word. 
Well, because we, yeah, because we have the iPhones, and our solution before this, and even when we're in other rooms, like in this guest bedroom, I do not have an Echo, so I'll use Siri because with HomeKit, she's connected everything the same way the Echo is, and I can just use Siri. But you know, it's still not as easy as walk. Like we use it in our bedroom, just like we lay in bed and we say turn off all the lights because even the bedroom lights are unused. So it's yep, it's that ease factor. And Siri does not wake up when you tell her to at all. She's terrible at it. So you actually have to hold the button, find your phone, and wait. Wait a minute. Hold on. So, Uyghur, you're telling me you can't get up for a minute, walk <laughs> into the other room, turn off all the lights, and then just walk back. I mean, we've gotten to that point where we've got to turn them off. Well, I, I'm not saying I can't, but why would I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. It's, it's he's, got, a, you know? he's got a good point, though. Like, I mean, you know, we yeah. both have children, right. and, you know, you end up in situations where it's like, I need something to happen right now and I have a baby in my arms, what can I do? And like, you know, you can, you can ask the Google home to do it. And like, even, you know, like we're exhausted. We just got into bed, <laughs> you know, he's in the bassinet. It's like, I'm not getting up. I think one of the yeah. first things that I bought for this house when we moved in was a remote control switch for our bedroom lights. So we have a remote for that's on like, on Velcro on our nightstand that like turns off the overhead lights in bed. So just so we don't have to get up and go to the switch, which is on the other side of the wall. Right. And we just have an echo in the room. So we just say it the same sort of thing, right? Exactly. And exactly. The commercial that Amazon has is perfect because I laughed at it until it happened to me. It's the middle of the night. The lights are off. You're not trying to wake up the baby. You're just trying to give it back. It's pacifier. So it falls back asleep and the baby pukes on you and you're in the dark and you say, Alexa, turn on the lights, like <laughs> turn on the nursery lights. And she does. Then you can see and you can clean yourself up. So there's little little benefits there, especially yep. with the little kiddos. Yeah, no, yeah. the hands the hands free features by far, right? Right. Yeah. Once you get used to them, it. I, I joke about it, but once you get used to them, I mean, I have Sarah. The the, the wife acceptance factor is so high on this thing, and yes. she she is just turning lights on and off all the time. In fact, we bought a new. Um, so when my son moved out. He took. He had this really nice couch lamp. We called it. You know, it's upward facing lamp, and then it had a downward facing reading lamp and I put hues in both of them and we could control both of them. But when he moved out, he took it with him. We bought a new one. Well, she bought the wrong one and it, it had one of those small lights, you know, for the reading lamp. It was the small ones. And of course, this is the bulb for it. This is the yep. bulb for it right here. It doesn't fit in that. And so it's sitting on my desk being unused. Here, Jim, I'll, I will ship you. Actually, I'm going to bring you. I have them right here. Uh -huh. there, I, have I have a, a pack of the adapters that I oh. bought for all of our uh, chandeliers because our chan all of our Wait, like, seriously, dude. Yeah. Oh, that's you incredible! Are, you're a magic man. Yeah, so they literally go from big they? to little. I just ordered a pack of them. Is this what you're talking about? The, the, yeah. like, the little ones? Yeah, yeah. So you just oh, do. Wow. I have them in all of my fans because all of my fans have hue lights, but all the fans were these candelabra size. So I just bought a pack of them on Amazon. Holy crap! That changes my whole world. Oh, it changed. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I See? didn't even know that existed. Yeah, they're awesome and they're super cheap. I mean, you shouldn't pay more than like twenty cents per adapter or something. Like that. I will even come out and pick one of those up from you. I'll just drop them off to you down at a Gallup or something. Yeah, that'd be great. When I bring you your uh, audio device that I've had for three years, <laughs> <laughs> there is another solution. Um, uh, is this is this like a plug-in lamp? Yeah, or is it? Yeah, it's a plug-in. Yeah, it's uh, a floor. It's a floor lamp. Yeah one of one of the things that um. I have is uh, their Wemo switches mm. and they're like uh, 25 bucks or 35 bucks or something like that. Uh, and you just plug anything into them and then they work with Alexa and they work with Google home um, and they just integrate like a hue light. Um, so you can go into, you can go into any of the different, like, hey, you know, turn on this light. And we had a couple of those set up. Like, I have um, those IKEA, like, light strips that are all the different colors. I have one of them on my uh, stepdaughter's bed. And I had it plugged into that. And, you know, it's just like, hey, turn on Layla's lights. And then, you know, they'll turn on. Um, yeah. Also so, great for Christmas you know, that's trees. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And they have timers on them and, like, all that. Right. Too. Yeah, Chris, the Christmas tree scenario is by far the best. Like, if you're okay. ever going to get into home automation, you're going to do this. 
start with the Christmas tree because that's one of those things that, you know, you got to reach behind. It's always the plug's mm-hmm. never in a great spot, you know, yada, yada, yada. So that is, Mike, I just redeployed. We I installed some new LED lighting down here in the basement, and I just redeployed the Christmas tree switch because mm-hmm. I think that's the easiest way to do a Christmas tree, uh, retrofit it with a, with a plug-in, with an outlet. So that came down here, and so now all the basement lights are on are set on that and you can just tell it, Hey, turn all the basement lights on and they turn on. Now I, I need to rename some things cause it turns everything on, including the studio lights. And then I have to tell it to turn the studio lights off. So I got some work. I've got a little bit of work to do to get that um, just right. But yeah, those little switches and they're, you know, it's, it's, it's still a little pricey Mark, you know, 35 yeah. bucks for a outlet. Now they're coming down. And you can find them for twenty, and it'll it'll probably get down. I imagine it'll be in the ten range when we get to the cheapest forms uh, of those. But you know that's still a little pricey. So how, mu- how much is a hue bulb? I think they're down fifty. They vary. Yeah, if you want just 15. white, you can get them anywhere between fourteen and nineteen. I think is yeah. usually the yeah. You, yeah I, I was just making that point right there. Yeah. You know? No, right on. Yeah. So. The light that will burn out in a few years costs you nineteen, whereas the switch or something like that. Yeah. Ooh, was it um, was it Kevin that was talking about? He did the actual switches in his wall. I think it's, he did. Yeah, and He's in the you chat. know what? He can verify. But he talks yeah. about the difficulty. He talked about the difficulty of installing them, the electrician, the cost. But when you think about it, if you know it's a home you're going to stay in for a while. Now that said, I have not had a hue light burn out on me yet. So I don't know how long I've had my no, light. it's one, maybe two and a half years. Yeah, it's yeah, too they're, early. yeah, Those they're LEDs. I mean, they're, they're LED lights. They're going to last for a really, really long. At time. least ten. Right. Them, depending yeah. on usage, you, you think you're yeah. going to get ten, probably ten out of those. Although I'm starting to replace. Oh, we, you know, we went through and did all fluorescent, you know, compact fluorescent years ago because, you know, they were better than incandescent at the time. That's what we had. They're all starting to go right now. I mean, I'll, I, I can't tell you how many of those I've got stacked up ready to go to the recycle um, because you don't want to throw those in the trash. But but uh, so they're starting and, and I'm, I'm holding off because I don't want to put too many bulbs in this place at this point because we know we'll probably be out of here in a year or so. So I've been kind of. I've been kind of holding off, and if I have to replace a light, I've been putting LED in its place, but I haven't been necessarily doing every single light um, that way. Mark, the Google Home uh, just recently, and I, I don't know when, one of its big knocks was that it would only support one account at a time. And yes. and I think they've updated the the software to allow multiple. Can you talk a little bit about that? Have you done that yet? Uh, they have. Uh, I haven't. Uh, actually enabled it um the only the only reason um that we would want that is for like different traffic notifications yep, yep. or shopping um, lists or yes, to do yes. lists would is another one you want to well that's them out. that's the issue so you guys i'm sure on alexa have those uh we have the shopping list but it's a shared shopping list so right. obviously we're both trying to get the different things um and that was on google keep for a while and they just moved it to google express which is their way of getting you to pay google to send you stuff oh and she heard me (laughs) so yeah yeah so um as those features come out which is one of the things they just announced that you'll be able to do uh reminders and um you know uh, calendar things and things like that. Uh, that will be something that we will want to, you know, have another account. Um, but right now we just kept it on the one person because I actually read on Reddit, uh, somebody said that they enabled it and they said that it took a lot longer for it to figure out who was talking. Um, Mm -hmm. and then I never got a chance to test it because, you know, we had a baby. So I was just like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to bother with that. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Well, that's the key, right? Is this is something where Amazon doesn't do at all, which is recognize who's talking. Exactly. And, and I think that's gotta be the next level, right? When we think about, all right, how do they make these things really useful? Well, I can tell the difference between me because you mentioned there's, you know, the traffic alerts, which, you know, uh, this this is another area where I think it could be really helpful is if it would alert me to, uh, hey, I, the the regular route you go to is all jammed up at the moment. You yes. might want to, you might want to think about something different. And I need that in alert. I'll see it. 
I, I don't want to ask every morning. I'll forget. You know. Yeah. I, I yeah. So, so that's what uh, that's one of the features that they just announced. Um, there will be a little light that'll blink on the Google Home, and then you'll say, you know, the wake word and what's up, and then it'll tell you whatever the information is. Um, I don't know if you guys have used Google now. I don't know if you have Android phones have. or, uh, yeah. you know, how all of those things pop up on your phone right. and like you have that whole screen that has all those things. That'll be a more limited version of it, but it'll be audio and it'll be like, you know, this is information you need to know about. Like, you know, they always use the example of if your flight is delayed or right. whatever. Um, and they're really, really good at giving you flight information for people that, I never fly anywhere. So it's just <laughs> like, yeah, that that's great. Like, uh, you know, is, is my drive to work going to be bad? And, you know, to, to be fair, like that's, that's the other main thing that they're working on. Right. Um, I would love that though. Cause I travel every month. Usually I've been on a weird stint at home, but usually I'm traveling every Monday, uh, on a plane. And so that would be fantastic for me to kind of be waking up. It's early, because a lot of times it is delayed or and I don't know about it yet and I could I could use an extra 20 minutes at home or you know if if I knew about it early enough so that'd be nice yeah yeah I think it just need we we need to figure that experience out because we're already overloaded in the notifications so if it sends yes. a notification to my phone I'm already overloaded now again I know I can like I, my issue is I know I can start shutting some of those notifications off, but I don't want to like, I'm like, Oh, I don't, I might miss something. Like I, I <laughs> like the news notifications. I like knowing when, you know, today, one of the listeners and be a uh, ping me on Patreon and I almost never get a note on Patreon, but I was appreciative that I got this Patreon note, you know, notification on it, but I get a lot of notifications. So Mike, a flight, being delayed or my traffic being laid almost needs to come in a second level of notifications. And I, yeah, I kind of want the thing to ask me. So I want it to sense I'm awake. I want it to know that I have a flight coming up in the next two hours. Right. And I want it to say, Hey Jim, do you want information on your flight? Cause we have an update. That's what I want it to do. Like for, for those kinds of really that second tier of notifications. That's right. what I want. Yeah. And that, that feature is what this is. It's going to be, you know, that light where it's like flashing at you and it's like, okay, yeah, this is information you need to know. Yeah, but and, Mark, I don't even want a light flashing. I want it yeah. to track me down. Like I want it to know <laughs> I'm in the room and say, Jim, hey, I have an update for you on your flight. That's today. It, it should be able, I think that's where we need to go for those really, you know, and, and maybe I enable it for the really important things like, because everything else I don't need, but I want traffic, severe weather. And flight information, right? And you know that would be really helpful if it was proactive with me. And this is like where you said it needs to know I'm in the room, so it needs to know I've walked in, I've gotten home. There's proximity things we could do with that today. You know? Yeah, and there are. Um, I I would not be surprised, and you know I'm going out a, a little bit on a limb here, but if there were an uh, like an IFTTT. Uh, integration that you could actually use um, because there are proximity notifications that you can set up and you know if you get a certain trigger for it you know it can give you a specific notification and yeah. obviously you know it's a third party and so it's not going to be as good as just being like you know Google telling you hey you know your flight's delayed um, but there are there are are a number of things where I was like, huh, like if I really wanted to put the effort in, I could set up some really, really cool stuff. And I think like the, the, the one that I always tell people about is, uh, my porch light turns on at sunset and it just knows when sunset is in an, you know, there's an if for that. And then it just, it's like, okay, yeah, my porch light is always on and I never have to worry about it. And it's never like on before it's dark. It's always on when it's dark. So, you know, that's a really, really cool thing. And, you know, just even little things like that. Uh, I think all of this home automation stuff just boils down to we can do this stuff on our phones, but you don't do it on your phone. Ha removing that one step of pulling it out of your pocket, finding the app that you want, and just turning it into, you know, let me say this, and then it'll do it. Um, I think that's really the 
the innovation of these, you know, Google Home and Alexa. Mm -hmm. And people don't really understand that until they actually use it because we had like a to-do list or like a grocery list that was on our fridge. And it's like, okay, yeah, we need milk. And it's like, okay, we're at the grocery store. Did we take a picture of the grocery list? And then it's like, okay, well, you know, we could do a shared note on Google Keep or whatever, but are you going to remember to write stuff in there? And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you were just going to tell Google, like, hey, you know, we need milk. And then it's just with us all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's that one step that you take out is the biggest thing. And people mm -hmm. don't really get it. Well, you know, if your our phones know where we're at and what we're doing all the time, like it, 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 I don't think if for most people, most security crazy people have all this shut off, but most of us, it's on by default. It's listening to us. It knows where we're at, knows what we're doing. It's got some idea of where it's at. And yet that information gets used for, for other purposes when it could be used for, for really good for, you know, for some of these services from a present standpoint, like, Hey, if I'm in my house and my phone is here, I'm here. Yeah. Like I should, you know, and why can't it ring? You know, I've got a couple of these Amazon devices around the house. Why can't it just broadcast on all? If it can't figure out where I'm at, why can't it broadcast on all of them and ask for me? Hey, Jim, are you, do you have a second? You know, and you, <laughs> you would just say, yeah, go ahead. I have an update for you on, you know, something that's going on tomorrow or whatever that's the kind of stuff. I mean, I still think we're kind of rinky dink. I mean, this, this home automation movement still kind of gadgety and gimmicky and poor, still kind of a poor experience at this point. Now I say that and it's not like, it's like Louis CK, that comedy routine. He's like, <laughs> you're in a chair flying through the sky. You know, you do you know the miracle that you are taking a part of, but Mike, I, you know, I don't know. I, sometimes I go, God, we could do so much better. Yeah, but I think for just the the average consumer, it was a great introduction. Yeah, right? no, right on. Like, right on. And I think that's that's the way you got to do it. If if all of a sudden your computer was talking to you, yes, you and I would be super pumped. Like it's it's <laughs> it's proactively talking to me. The average person would be super freaked out. So uh, you know, it's a good introduction. And it'd be so great. These companies were smart because like we just said, it kind of prepped the people and it, these devices need to sell in order for these companies to be able to keep creating them. So you prep them with this, you get very used to talking to your device and then the masses are very ready for the next uh, iteration where it proactively talks to you. So we'll see. I, I personally think that um, the way that Google is doing it, having, you know, the flashing light, like um, if I see a flashing light on this thing, I'm I'm asking what's up because mm -hmm. that's like, you know, 2001 stuff like, you know, Dave, what's going on? Like, yeah. you know, that's got to be in the room. Weird. If it's if you have one and it's in the basement and you're you go upstairs to go to bed, you got to walk through that space. That's unless you've got a second one. I guess they would flash. On well, the phone, right. You know, we, we have we have the one it's in our living room. That's where our front door is. So I'm going to see it if if that happens and I could see there being a scenario where I definitely don't want it to like know that I'm there and then talk to me, you know, like if, if I'm carrying my son around and I want it to be quiet, like, and then it like knows that I'm there and it starts yelling at me because I left it on 11 because I was listening to, you know, the sword or something. And then it's just like, Hey, there's traffic. <laughs> it's like, Oh, no, don't, don't. Again, it should be smart enough, right? Like, yeah. hey, it should don't see come the baby. <laughs> well, or just be smart enough to know, hey, I'm going to do an alert. I know the last time you had this thing on, it was 11, but I'm going to come on at five because yeah. that's the right thing to do, you know? And if Yeah, that's that's one thing that I, I really kind of wonder about if, you know, if it could, you know, like listen to the microphone and just be like, you know, the room's really not that loud right now. Maybe I shouldn't be at 11 when, you know, I'm going to beep or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's definitely like having just separate volume for notifications and music would just solve that problem. But then I think it gets to the simplicity of the device where they're just yeah. like, okay, you know, we want everything to be one thing. Because I have like three different volumes on my phone. And then I can't figure out why something's <laughs> quiet. And then like, you know, this app is blaring and everything else is on mute. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, no, I didn't, I didn't want everyone to hear like 
me firing up Hearthstone in the middle of work. Like, that wasn't <laughs> good. I shouldn't have done that. Um, so, yeah. So, I understand the simplicity thing. And, you know, I can, I can always play devil's advocate. Every time I hear uh, something that a tech company does, and it's just like, well, you know, that, that does sound horrible in your use case, but I understand why they did that. Yeah, it's a balance, right? It's a balance between convenience and and functionality. And I would, I, I'm one of those guys, I would prefer that the sound resets to a reasonable volume and I'll turn it up if I, and that would drive people nuts. I told you what level I want this at, don't change yep. it, right? right? So it's that, um, well, but this is an area where machine learning could help us, where mm -hmm. the, the device, the database on us gets smarter and it kind of knows if it's, you're turning it up all the time. Well, should I just leave it turned up? And right. you say yes, and then boom, it's done, right? I mean, we could do this. Man, I feel like I'm an, like, get off my lawn. I feel like I'm an old guy. <laughs> about it. Again, it's give it a we second. Live it's in going the to space. It's going to space. Yeah, it's going to space. <laughs> uh, the future is here, and you're just complaining about it, Collison. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, there's so much great stuff. Um, there's so much great stuff out there that's, I mean, I just think we just got this new washer. And man, that thing sings and dances and does all kinds of cool. I mean, it's <laughs> it's pretty amazing uh, what it does, and and that's just a washing machine. And so, um, I think there's some some pretty cool stuff. Mark, anything else we missed uh, that you've been using that you want to you kind of want to talk about? Uh, we go through. I the mean, list? yeah, I I think so. I mean, just some of the like cool stuff is, you know, the. Uh, like I, I didn't talk about Chromecasts at all, hmm. uh, and the, just the idea that I can ask Google to play a show on my Chromecast, you know, on Netflix, like that is just that's cool to me. Like that I don't have to, you know, go to my phone and like cast something. I can just be like, hey, play this. Um, and then just even the idea of you know when it pops up like, are you there? You know, we've watched like thirty episodes of something, and then it's like, are you there? Um, you can tell Google to play on the TV and it'll start that up again. You can tell Google to turn on the captions and it'll start it up. You can tell it to mute it. You can tell it to, you know, turn the volume up and down, like all those different things. And um, I just, I find that super, super cool. I also find it really cool that you can tell it to change your hue lights to different Crayola colors. So like you can tell the lamp to change it to like burnt sienna or macaroni and cheese and it knows that that's a color. And you know, just all of those little things are just so cool to me that we just live in a world where I can tell a thing to make my lamp be macaroni and cheese. Mm -hmm. And it just understands like all the context behind that and the problem is, Mark, though, that stuff's so obscure, you don't know it unless you've read about it. It doesn't, yeah. again, it's not, you know, it's not intuitive enough. Like, I never would have thought, I could have owned one of those things for a while, and I never would have thought, huh, I want my lights to be macaroni and cheese. Like, <laughs> that's, that's but now that you know, thought. you're going to do it all the time. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. just not a thought. And unless you yeah. listen to a podcast like this, you don't know, right? I mean, the average consumer is not going to know for the most part, so they're... There almost needs to be some kind of, um, you know, some kind of device or some kind of thing where it it highlights. You know, Siri did this for a while. Uh, your iPhone would do this. You'd get a new iPhone and it'd be like, it would you'd be giving. There was a tips app in there that would roll through every day. You'd get a new tip, right, Mike? I, I think I remember something like that, right? Am I? Uh, I don't think I had it. I think there's a tips app. I'm pretty well, maybe because you're you're the Apple guy. Maybe you're I probably just too deleted good. it right when it happened. You're pre you're too good for the tips. You you know what you're doing. But I, I I'm pretty sure there's a tip app in there that would remind you. It's one of those things. If you're a new user, it would just be I'd be turned on by default. And I think every day you'd get a new tip. You kind of mark. You kind of need something like that because the changes are coming so fast. And it's right there. <laughs> there you go. It's still there. You're, you're an Apple guy. Yeah, and you know, I, I think about it, and I always, uh, one of the things that I like recommend to people is uh, setting up, you know, a Logitech Harmony thing um, to control their TV, and whether you do that with a remote or you do that with the hub that I have that integrates with this, um, that piece of technology, if I wasn't who I was, 
would never get set up. Right. Because right. it's just one of those things that is amazing once you set it up. But you're going to sit down for an hour or two and mess around with it in order to get it to do the things that you want. And then later on, when you add another piece of technology, you're just like, do I really want to go through that entire process again and make sure that it remembers to leave my HDMI switch on, which was a problem for a while. It was just like, oh, let me shut that off for you. And it's like, no, no, leave that on. And like nobody but somebody who troubleshoots stuff all the time is going to figure all this stuff out. Like my setup is pretty complicated and there's all kinds of wires. And like if you saw the ceiling of my basement, you would be like, huh, that's a lot of wires. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And yeah, it's just it's it's a great piece of technology that is super complicated to set up. And it's one of those things you buy it as a gift for somebody. You're going to their house to set it up or they will hate you forever. You're you're totally right. It's the equivalent of like a home media server and then whatever app you put on top to access it. Right. Like guys like us, it is amazing. And I set it up for my parents and they're like wow, this is freaking awesome. But I'm getting the calls of, hey, Plex isn't working right now. What's the issue? Okay, yeah. fire up team viewer, remote into their house, see what's going on with it. But like you just said, without someone that's a tinkerer and a problem solver, they're just not going to worry about it. But yep. once they do realize like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. So hopefully we get to the point that Jim was talking about where these things are just so intelligent that it really doesn't take much effort from the user. And I think we're getting there but maybe just not quite yet. Well, it's the promise of machine learning, right? That's right. all I hear Microsoft say these days, AI and machine learning. Those are the, and we're going to fix this with AI and machine learning. Yeah. Um, it's like the business intelligence of 10 years ago. You know, yeah. And it, Emily just chimed in to say, uh, you know, I'm the one who has to make all this stuff work. Uh, you know, even like, you know, setting up all the podcasting stuff and, you know, figuring out like what the input's going to be, what, you know, what, wire plugs into where like she's got a pretty good handle on it now with the mixer and all that stuff um because she listens to you guys all the time uh so but it's still like okay you know i have this tangle of cables plugged in and then this usb extender is plugged into uh that usb interface and then like you have to unplug that one and then plug this one in but you don't want to unplug that one and then you got you know can't put it into this usb hub because <laughs> right. it's a usb 3.0 hub and then it you know it doesn't work because it it has power to it but it doesn't really understand that it has enough power and then it has to go into the main computer and it has to be on this one <laughs> and then you know the other uh, well the you know which one am i going to unplug it so i do that all the time so right. i'm just like i have all this stuff in my head yes, this has to be plugged into this exact place or it's going to break. Well, and it's so funny, like the, when you, like when you're a couple, which everyone is more technical, the other one ends up picking up a lot more than you realize. Mm -hmm. When I was down, uh, I was in Florida for work and our, I had just switched everything over to uh, running PF sense on a virtual machine. So our entire router, our entire internet in our house is based on a virtual machine. And I forgot to click the don't go to sleep button on the windows machine. So it would go <laughs> to sleep and the internet would go out. Hannah was able to go in and refire up a VM within all I had to do is just kind of tell her generally what we're doing. And I mean, I, it's not a super complicated task, but it's something she had definitely never done before. And just the stuff they pick up on is, is incredible. She's almost becoming just as proficient with this sort of stuff as I am. Yeah. Maybe like the networking and setting that sort of stuff up, but she uh, will get a call from her mom, my mother-in-law, and usually she's calling me to ask for computer help. And Hannah can solve 95% of the problems just from being around me and, and kind of learning it as she goes. So it's a lot of fun. It's almost like it's like a proud moment. It's like, you know, your kid when yeah. they do something really bad, like, oh, I'm so proud of you. You did such a good job. <laughs> yeah, I think Emily knows how to do all this stuff. She just makes me do it. In, and anyway. I think that's what Hannah does. Too. <laughs> she could do it all. And she's just like, no, I'll just let Mike go. Or something like yeah, that. we she need could, something to do. We need to feel right? important. Right? We need to feel important. We they let us feel, feel important. important. How nice of them, right? They yes, do. Yeah. it's we're just because we're just meatheads. Let's that's all we are. Honest. That's all we are. We are just big. We served meatheads. one task in their life, and that's it. <laughs> kicked it off. And, yeah, and you kicked go it full off. circle, right? <laughs> full circle. We just kicked it off. That's all we do. Yep. So, so well, Mark, thanks for jumping in here tonight, and uh, and we'll get you back on the show here every so often when you got something new to 
share with us and um, trying to schedule something with Emily as well. We want to do another combined story behind uh, home, home gadget geek show. So we got to get her. Thanks for helping her get all that podcasting stuff done. Her, her podcast dynamite, man. I don't, do you know how, yeah. you know how good she is, right? I mean, she's, I really do, good. I do. And I, you know, I'm going to say, um, I, I don't listen to her podcast and I have a reason for it. It's because I will find the one thing that is the tiniest thing that I wanted her to do differently. And then I'll say, Hey, you should have done this differently. And then she'll just want to rip my head off. So I just avoid it. But every time that she plays it just like in the background or she's editing and I'm like sitting down and I'm just like, this is really good. And I tell people about it and I'm just like, seriously, like it's my wife and I'm going to come from that point of bias, but this is an amazing show and it's super interesting. And like, it's 10 minutes of your time. Like what, what are you, what else are you going to do with 10 minutes? Like you're driving somewhere. You cannot drive somewhere in less than 10 minutes. So just listen to my wife's show, mm -hmm. just put it on and you'll, you'll be entertained for those 10 minutes. Yeah. It's called the story behind and you can just look that up in your podcast player. If you haven't done it yet, if you're home gadget geeks listener, load this one first thing Monday morning, it's always, it's always <laughs> there for you on Monday. If you don't listen to it on the weekend, some people do. Uh, and then story behind right behind that. And, uh, and it's my, it's one of my go-tos. I do not stay far behind, uh, with it. And I have a few podcasts that I listen to Mike. I'm sure you do too, that are, I'm getting kind of into some shorter podcasts that got some really cool. There's a North Omaha history one that I've been listening to. And, and I still listen to long ones, but Mike, have you, have you caught on to any of the shorter seven? There's one called shots of history, which is all about the history of alcohol that I really enjoyed, but I was on them for a while. And then uh, I'll just throw in a plug. I've been, like I told you, I think like a week ago or two weeks ago, I switched over to audiobooks. Like I've just been super, I, I go in phases, right? Books start to bore me because they're so long. So I switched to podcasts. There's a book out called American Kingpin. Um, can't remember the author's name written by a reporter. It's basically the story behind the guy who created the Silk Road. So if you're a tech guy oh, yeah. who kind of followed that, um, and if, if anyone is in the chat, I, I don't actually know the story behind the guy, so I don't know what happens to him. So don't ruin it for me. Cause I'm about three hours. No spoilers, no no spoilers. Spoil. but, um, it's written by a reporter. So it's very well written, a uh, very cool book about the whole Silk Road and the guy who created it and pretty he fun. Dies. But, he dies at the end. No, I'm just kidding. I, don't know. <laughs> I think he does, though. That's the problem. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I'm figuring it doesn't like that. Yeah, it's it's the whole story that we get to, so it'll be it'll be good. Mark, I also have to make I have to make one more yeah. plug. Uh, yeah. I I want to say that uh, Emily's podcast was just uh, nominated for uh, an Academy of Podcasters Award in the history mm -hmm. category, oh, and wow. she's up against some really big podcasts like. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh, you must remember this was on there. And like, then I see my wife show with that and I'm like, that's pretty incredible. Like, you know, that's, no that's really, really cool. How so do we help yeah, I just wanted to, uh, I don't know if there's a vote or something. I don't, I don't think there's think some there voting is. coming up. Yeah. Uh, well, vote for it then. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. well, if you don't listen to it, listen to it. That's what you should do. Uh, get that subscribe. Mark, do you have a, you have a favorite besides Emily's? Do you have a favorite podcast? Kind of your go-to? Um, Uh, oh, hold on. Nope. We lost you for just a second. Start over. <laughs> All right. You, am, I, am I here? You're back. Yeah, okay. you're back. Yeah, we lost you for just a second. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the West Wing Weekly. Okay. Um, and also uh, his other podcast, uh, Song Exploder, which is really incredible if you're a musician, um, even if you're not a musician, just breaking down uh, how a song is created. Um, like he talked to Rivers Cuomo uh, of Weezer and he laid out how he writes his songs now. And if you listen to it, it just, it, it blew me away because he has this book of like gibberish that he writes and then he like sings gibberish and then he like transposes it and then like he listens to a different song and then he like steals the chord progression and then like plays it in a different key. And like, he does all this super weird stuff where he just constructs songs from like nonsense. And yeah. then like, you know, it turns into this song that is actually really good. Um, and then it has other people on there, uh, you know, like Courtney Barnett. I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but she's Australian. She's incredible. And she has this one song that she talked about that, Really, it's just her talking about the story behind it and 
you know, that's another plug for my wife's podcast, but <laughs> wow, we can't get away from those. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's it. So cool. yeah, those, those are probably my favorites. Cool. Um, you know, there's a, so Lionel Richie in the, in the eighties sang that song, Penny Lover. And, uh, you think, well, what, what's a penny lover? Well, it was just a, no, it was just two nonsense words. He put in the chorus until he, you know, cause like you said, musicians will oftentimes put nonsense words in until they figure out what the words they want them to be. Well, that's what he put in there. And it, he, he said, it sounded so good and we couldn't find another replacement for it. We just left it in. And, uh, and so that's interesting to hear, you know, I haven't, I haven't heard that, uh, that technique in a long time. So that's, that's pretty good. Mark, thanks for coming on. Tonight, being a part of what we do, uh, just a couple of reminders for everyone. Don't forget, next week, show is an hour later. So if you're going to come out and join us, 9 p.m. Central, Veronica Belmont is here to talk about bots. And we're pretty excited about that. If you're listening to the recorded version of this during the week, this would be the one week I don't ever beg you guys to come out on to, to come out live. I just don't. We have a great crew that comes out. There's uh, 10 or 15 of you every single week. I love the live guys. They're always out here. It's awesome on Thursday nights. If you could come out one night in the year, next next Thursday would be great. I just I really want Veronica to see how great the Home Gadget Geeks community is. So if you can make it Thursday night, 9 p.m. Central. Uh, so that's 10 Eastern, 7. Is that 7 Pacific? I think it is. Yes, 7 it Pacific. Is. Um, I'm super excited about this too, because bots is a huge part, a new part of what KPMG is doing. So my, my job in the next week is to figure out what I can and can't talk about uh, with our use of bots <laughs> and see if we can talk about it because it's such a huge part of things now. So I'm super excited that I'm probably going to learn a lot too. And that's why I like being the co-host on this show is because I usually end up learning a lot of things. No, it's going to be great. So if you're a regular listener in the community, come and join us next week, 9, 9 p.m. for next week only. John Biggs, who's who's a big supporter in the community. Love John. First time on, and he's coming on to talk about Plex. And so the big announcement today around Plex of supporting the, the newest updates is going to support live TV, which is, for me, that's the first step in me, Windows Media Center gone out of the out of it. Sarah has been, we has not been using Plex as much as I wanted to, but there's no reason to, she's still been using Windows Media Center. I've been on Plex now for a year of Plex Pass, those kinds of things. Um, but uh, John's going to come on. We're going to talk uh, among other things. There's a lot of good stuff we're going to talk about, but John's coming on the week after that would be the week of the 22nd to talk about that. And then we've restacked Aaron Lawrence uh, to come back on right after that. So boom, 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 three, three shows right in a row. Aaron, uh, we couldn't get to all the material Aaron had, and she's doing some dynamite work. So you're going to want to come back uh, for those two shows. We have a new, we'll have it, Mike, we're going to have a new little kind of fill in guest host for you as well. So for those of you who can remember Shauna Dorsey, she came on, we had her on as a guest. Uh, Well, she's going to come on and kind of, we're going to try her out in your, in your shoes. I think she's set for the 22nd when Aaron comes on. So, the guys will be outnumbered in the seats. Like, oh, mm. man. Two girls. I can't say it that way. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, it, I, I hope I stop myself in time. So uh, it's, I'm going to be outnumbered. I'm a little embarrassed, actually, by saying that. Um, uh, we'll have Sean on. She's dynamite. She's going to ask some great questions. We'll have Aaron back. So we got three great weeks to join us live. We'd love to have you come out here. Uh, and be a part of it. Remember, if you want to support the show, best way to do that is through the Patreon link or through the Amazon link, both on the front page. Love to have you do that. We have been providing uh, the pre and post show. I just did it to our Patreon supporters. So if you are, if you're interested in getting the pre and the post show, uh, there's our video on YouTube. If you've got other ways you want to get them done, let me know. If you want the audio only version, I guess I'll have to figure out how to do that. Maybe make an RSS feed off of, oh, maybe on Mediafire and create a, I'm wearing the Mediafire uh, shirt tonight. Maybe we can create a new audio feed. It's another five minutes worth of work. It's not that big of a deal, but let me know. For now, our Patreon supporters get it, and uh, you can get it for one buck. If you just come in one buck a month, great to have you in a support. We appreciate all the supporters that are out there doing it. You guys know who you are. We've read that list before, and uh, thanks for what you do, guys, on uh, on Patreon. So we appreciate it. Of course, you can always give us feedback. If you want to hear something, you got somebody that you want to have on the show, just let me know. Uh, Mark, you're on the show because Emily was like, Hey, we got to get Mark on the show. Yeah. So uh, we have Emily. We appreciate you and getting getting Mark on here. Um, and so send me an email, Jim at theaverageguy.tv. That's probably the best way to do it. And then of course, theaverageguy.tv platform, both web and media hosting, powered by Maple Grove Partners. And I got a chance to meet Gary live in the flesh. First time Gary Johnson that I met him 
Uh, personally, it was great to, to meet him out there at the University of Maryland and see Christian graduate a week and a half ago. Um, was that a week and a half? Yeah, uh, a, week, a week ago last Monday. And, uh, and so Christian is now done. He's full-time at Amazon and uh, working uh, his stuff at uh, Maple Grove Partners. So if you want plans to start as, as low as $10 a month for great hosting, Head out to maplegrovepartners.com. And then don't forget, you can download the app, homegadgetgeeks.com. We thank LastPass for their sponsorship of that. We're going to get Amber back here in July, hear what's going on at LastPass, and we're excited for that. Somebody, I forget where I read it, I think it was Drashna posted in the Facebook group that apparently LastPass snuck in a little backup in the end of there so you can kind of back your stuff up there. I don't, I didn't dig into it, but I'm pretty sure that was Drashna. Who talked about that? Um, he's not. Well, he's missing tonight. I wonder where he's at. I hope he's all right. Um, so uh, LastPass continues to do great stuff out there, and we thank LastPass for their sponsor. I was just thinking today. I was like, you know, it's an annual thing, and I'm like, right. ah, when's the last time I? <laughs> I could probably be talking about them for five years and uh, and not uh, and not take their uh, take their payment. So yeah, Mark says it was Drashna. So um, I need to go out and check that out. Do the last pass, Mike. Last pass is one of those things I just kind of set and forget. Me too. It's super handy today. I opened a new account somewhere and it just prompted me, like, "Hey, you want to save this thing? Yes, please." Yep. That's helpful. Like that's helpful. That's helpful stuff. It's the apps you don't think about but use every day but forget you use them every day that are the most beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. Or And that's one of them. Like when I set up, a, yeah, totally. When I set up a new account and it says, do you want me to save this login information? I say yes. Especially if I've right. created a really complex password the first time. But when uh, I go to any site and I just am able to click login, I don't think that it's, you know, you forget. It's LastPass plugging that in and it is. Right. No. So, Right on. Super convenient. So we thank LastPass for their sponsorship uh, here at Home Gadget Geeks. We're live every Thursday except next week. One hour. The good news is it's like daylight saving time that like if you're early, you're not late next week. So if you come early, hang out. I'll do I'll be in a I'll be here at eight in case, just in case you guys show up and we'll do a little pre-show with that. But we will go live at nine PM. We're excited to have Veronica on here and we ask you guys to come out as well. 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out at theaverageguy.tv forward slash live every week. Stay around for the post show. With that, we'll say goodnight, everybody. Good night. And with that, I will be right back. Okay. Yes, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. All right, Mark, how did how did it feel to be on the podcast? Was, do we do all right? That's good. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, I, I was a little sad that I didn't get to say that yesterday by the Beatles was originally scrambled eggs. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, he actually, I think he performed it on uh, Paul McCartney. Performed it on Jimmy Fallon. Oh. Uh, back when he was like before he took over the Tonight Show. Okay. Um, and so he sung yesterday as scrambled eggs and like the original like lyrics and it was super weird and it's super cool to <laughs> hear that. I'm sure that's on YouTube somewhere, but sounds yeah. like a Weird Al version of it too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he would have just made it that way. Yeah, that that little musician's trick is kind of interesting to, yeah, to just put gibberish in there to kind of fill in the, you know, because if they get if they get stuck as they're creating the music, they don't want to get they want to stay in the rhythm of it, and it's more important exactly. to get the musical pieces out, and then come back around and just add words later. That's kind of academic at that point. The words are just academic, but they're just trying to get the melodies out. Yeah, that's one of the things like when we're working on our stuff, um, we will sometimes just have like nonsense and, uh, you know, they'll our guitarists both write their own songs and do their own melodies and their own lyrics and everything. Uh, we've collaborated on some of the lyrics, but usually it's like, you know, one of James's songs or one of Mike's songs. Um, but occasionally it'll just be like, you know, I, I think you want to have a feeling here and you want to go for like this kind of like story, like. You know, something tragic happened to this character in this song. So you should, you know, just start it around there somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's never it's never anything like, you know, super serious. It's just like Yeah. No, it's know, cool. Whatever. You know, it's interesting when when the when the police would get together, you know, they would all bring their own music, right? And mm -hmm. Sting would bring a bunch and Andy would bring a bunch, and I forget the other guy. But uh <laughs> But Andy was kind of the crazy. He was the punk rocker out of the out of the band. And you know, they started as kind of punk, and then they kind of went mainstream in the eighties. 
but it ended up being so police they'd put eight let's just say they put eight songs on their album six of them would be stings <laughs> there'd be yeah. one and the, you can always tell andy's because it was just it was just crazy and then you know there would be the other one and and um and so it's interesting the way that works and then in genesis Michael Rutherford and Tony Banks would write these long epic. They love these epic 10 minute sagas of, of songs, right? These lamb lies down on Broadway or Duke or some of those that they did on those earlier albums. And Phil would just all, you can tell Phil songs. They're just hits, you know, Phil would just write the hits. And so always interesting, uh, Stuart. Thank you. Yeah. Other Jim uh, dropped in there, Stuart. So, Hey, there we go. Hold on. Let me, let's bring this. Let's bring this up here full screen. There's Emily and, and there's Cam. Cameron, right? Is that right? Yep. Very yes, nice. Emily, Cam. Love it. She been standing there the whole time, like. No, no, no. She came okay. down. Uh, he 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 started fussing while you were still recording, so she went back upstairs. But she just came down for the post show. So yeah, we'd have been wrong with that, by the way. But, but uh, it's like family here, you know. Yeah, it's he's so funny. I come back up. Emily is always she's here all the time. Yeah. So she's become part of the part of the, the framework. And then she's always there Saturday mornings too. So I see, you know, I get a double dose and then I listen to her on um uh you know a couple times a week um with what she's doing. She didn't miss a beat. With yeah. Kid, with yeah, no, she's she's uh she recorded an episode last night and edited it last night and then threw it up. Yeah. Um you know, she, she like she wrote it. You know, I we had band practice, and like she was taking care of Cameron, and um, you know, he wouldn't go to sleep, and like so she was like, she was up late, and then you know she's you know nursing him and like doing all that stuff, and then she, it's like okay, well I got to record an episode now, and I got to write an episode now, and like it's like uh, did you did you want me to stop playing? Like you should have said something. Like I feel bad, but you know she just she rips through it now, and I, I yeah. think back to. Uh, when she was doing the show with James, when she was doing a uh, classic little podcast and those shows were like, you know, two hours of them drinking a lot of wine and <laughs> sitting wine down and, cheese. and wine and yeah, cheese. wine and cheese. Yeah. yeah. And sitting down and then editing that. And like, uh, there was actually a day where she recorded the podcast and it needed to go up the next day. And she was, super sick super like oh like she overslept like she called out of work like everything and like i was just like okay you know what i'm gonna sit down i'm just gonna edit it i'm just gonna you know go through it edit the whole thing and i think i edit faster than her and it took me i don't know two two and a half hours to get through uh you know because it's a long show and then you know I didn't know like what you know needed to be cut and whatever, but like it's just James like mumbling stuff and then <laughs> you know him like stuttering into things and yeah. you know I had that yeah. on my podcast with him too. And when you have more than one person, it's a lot harder to edit. Oh yeah, and I'm oh, sure you totally. know you do this all the time. Well, I we was don't really trying. This. We never edit this. Oh, okay, so, you don't yeah. edit it. Yeah, okay, not at all. It's a one take um, wonder. It's just it would be too much yeah. work. I'd never get anything else done. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I and, was trying to keep my my ums and uh, all that stuff as. That's nah, you're fine. We I never get complaints. <laughs> never get complaints from the audience. You know, after a while, uh, Mark, we've been doing this for I've been doing this for six plus years at this point. This show, you keep the people who are willing to live through that, right? And then anybody yeah. new you gain, that's the new expectation. And so, I think it's you got to kind of plow through the first year, and you're going to get a few complaints and stuff like that. But for the most part. People just, uh, just, just now the listeners are just who they are and they just kind of know uh, they're going to get what they're going to get and they're super, uh, super faithful. Hey, here we are. So we just had, a, we just talked about AI and I was struggling to, to understand who this third player was in the police. I imagine I could have just asked, right? I could have said, Hey, Echo, <laughs> Echo, who are the members of the police? The police's members were Sting, Clark Kent. Stuart Copeland, Andy Summers, and Henry Potovani. There you go. So I, I could have just they I could have just done that. You know, that, I'm but that's why she knew that though. Like that that's one of those that I would expect Google to get, but not Alexa. You know, mm. or maybe even Cortana. I wonder what Cortana would say. Hey Cortana, it'll take her a while. Cortana on the kangaroo is 
pretty miserable because it's it takes a lot of system resources and the kangaroo just does not have that. Let's see if we can get. I'll test Google Home after that one. Yeah, no, go ahead because it's going to take me a second. We'll okay. Try your Google Home. Hey Google, who were the members of the police? The band members of the police include Sting, Stuart Copeland, Andy Summers, and others. And others. Oh, didn't oh, even so, mention the other guy. So <laughs> Superman wasn't in there. No. Clark Kent. Yeah. <laughs> you have Cortana already, Jim? Yeah, no, go Syria. ahead. Go ahead with Syria. Yeah. Who were the members of the police? The very best of Sting and the Police is by Sting and the Police. Yeah. Yes, oh, exactly. Siri. She knew, she knew the Siri's question. The <laughs> Get it right. Who are the members of the police? And then her response was, do I want to buy an album from iTunes? No. Of course. <laughs> of course. Let's see. Hey, Cortana. That Who are the members of the police? According to Wikipedia.org, the police were an English new wave band formed in London in 1977. For most of their history, the band consisted of Sting, lead vocals, bass guitar, primary songwriter, Andy Summers, guitar, and Stuart Copeland, drums, percussion. There you go. Yeah. Huh. Cortana got it right. Thank you, Cortana. Yeah, I have to say, the when you know the Echo came out, uh, I saw that commercial and I was like, oh, yeah, that seems kind of lame and then like as time went on i was like okay you know what i want to do some of that stuff and then i was looking at it and i'm like okay this all seems like a device that's solely designed to get you to buy things on amazon and that was the reason that i didn't buy it i was like okay i want to you know google isn't trying to sell me anything you know they're trying to sell me like a couple of devices but they just care about getting the information so they can do ads which some people might find creepier, but I don't really care. Um, but yeah, so I was like, okay, you know, I don't, I don't want to like Layla to just be able to talk to the thing and have it buy, you know, a dollhouse or something. Like, I don't want that to happen. So I want to get Google and you know not have that issue to worry about. And then I was just so invested in the Google ecosystem yeah. that I was just like. I'm but just going to stick with this. I haven't found Amazon to be a buying machine like I thought it was going to yeah. be. Yeah. I mean, Mike, I don't know about you, but I, I, I've i yet to buy anything off the app. I was just going to say that. I haven't bought a single thing, and she hasn't really prompted me to do so either. No. Mm. Mm. Let's see. Um, Let's just she's, try not even, she's not even pushed you with the shopping list, which I'm surprised, right? Yeah. You, you would think that'd be a perfect You would think thing that would be the- hey, you got this on your shopping list. Do you want me to just buy it at Amazon? I would think that when I log into Amazon on the computer, it would be like, hey, you've got these things in your list. Do you want me to get them for you? And she doesn't bother me, which is what I like. Yeah, they, they will. Um, it will at the main page tell you you've got things on your list. Yeah. So we'll do that. But Echo, how much is an Audio Technica ATR2100? I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. <laughs> That's a complicated on one. What about That's how true, much yeah. is a uh, just how much is a an ATR to, uh, Echo? Let's try twenty one hundred. How much is a, a ATR twenty one hundred? Sorry, I'm not sure. Well, okay, we'll try Chromebook. Echo, how much is a Chromebook? Sorry, I'm not sure. Wow. Yeah. So there you yeah, go. No, I mean, there's, I there's your retail fail. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I it's not something I guess I should worry about because I buy like literally everything off Amazon. Mm -hmm. I have Amazon Dash buttons, like I have you know all that stuff, and you know I guess I shouldn't have worried about. But I was like, mm, no, it's a good, it's a good worry. I don't know. It's a good worry. Ask, ask, um, ask your Google how much a uh, Audio Technica ATR twenty one hundred is. Hey Google, how much does an Audio Technica ATR twenty one hundred cost? Sorry, I can't help with that yep. yet. That's 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 a try Cortana. Hey Cortana, how much is an Audio Technica ATR twenty one hundred? Oh, I need to turn it up. Shoot. Oh, it didn't matter. She just opened up a web page. So they all fail. Ask yeah. Siri. We won't even try Siri. <laughs> yeah. just, just for S and G's. Siri is out. <laughs> how much is an ATR twenty one hundred? Is it, I wonder. Is it, I wonder if that might be the issue. Like, you know, I mean, she—the very first result is what I want. But yeah, 
Well, you know, I, that's that's a pretty unique microphone, and there's not a lot of other devices that have that ATR twenty one hundred. Right. Okay. One and it's a pretty popular microphone. How? Oh, of course. <laughs> How much is Tide detergent? Here is what I found. <laughs> Wikipedia. Here's what Tide is. Tide is yeah. Echo. Echo. How much is Tide detergent? Amazon's choice for Tide detergent is Tide Pod Spring Meadow Scent, 81 loads. It's $18.16 total, including tax. After yeah. a discount of $3. Would you like to buy it? No. The top <laughs> yes. result for Tide We're detergent buying. is Tide Smart Pouch Original Scent Liquid Laundry. Order 20. <laughs> 48 ounces pouches. It's $16.04 total, including See, tax. Here you go. This is After the, a discount of $3. Would you yeah. like to buy it? Echo, stop. The way she goes. That is, um, that's, there's your mark. There's your buying machine, yep. right? That that yep. was. Um, Just people trolling you by coming over to your house and being like, you know, can you, can you buy a thousand balloon animals? Echo? Well, I can set a pin. I can set a pin. Yeah. Right, so. Well, and, and my only complaint about the, like, well, combination between Echo and the dash buttons is that they set what can be purchased. So, for example, I we don't like the pods. Or I should say my wife doesn't like the pods. I could care less. <laughs> but uh, so, so we don't buy the pods. And we have to buy this very specific scent because, like, I'm allergic to all these scents of detergents. It's really weird. So we have to buy this very spe specific item. And we can do it on Amazon but we can't do it through the dash button. Dash button says here, when you buy Tide stuff, these are your options. Okay. And mm. the one that we would normally buy has now been moved off of the dash button list. So Mountain Spring in liquid or in powder, which we are fine with either, they don't offer on the dash button anymore. So it's, uh, I don't like how they control that. If it's, if it's a branded button, let me buy anything that I can usually buy on Amazon. But they're think how complicated stuff that is. You know, I, it's... It, but it's, it's not still, really, right? Like, it's mapped to an item. And yeah. And it's a brand, and so sold by I think you can hack them. I, I think you can hack them, them, hack them and actually do that. I um, want to hack them and just... Yeah, some of them I need to get rid of. Like, I don't order Pop-Tarts enough to have a Pop-Tart button, but I do. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah. I have, I have a Gatorade <laughs> button. We had a Gatorade button, too, and we actually yeah. used that one quite a bit, but now we realize that we really shouldn't be drinking that much Gatorade because it's yeah. not good for you. Not I that am, much. Uh, yeah, that much. I do buy, uh, you know, I do buy some and throw it in the trunk. You did the cliff bars, right? I do cliff bars and, well, yes, I do cliff bars because that's. Yeah, we have the cliff bar button. It's yeah. awesome. The Gatorade would be, that's the, that's going to invoke an extra charge, isn't it? For, for delivery. Isn't that. What do you mean? Uh, no. Now? No? No, it's a, it's a prime delivery, but you, Is you it? get. It's like, I think it's like 18 bucks for 12 of them. It's pretty bad. Pretty expensive. So, yeah, because yeah, I think I get uh, for I think I get eight at Baker's. I could have gotten them for three ninety nine uh, if I had bought five. That's super cheap for for that. So it's probably it's just easier. Bike Baker's is on my way home. I just stop, go in, get yeah. two, throw them in the trunk. Then when I'm done working out, I always grab a, a, a you know a cup from Gallup, fill it up with ice, go out there, and on the way home. Right rehydrate that's i got a i got a brb for a baby thing okay yeah. Oh, yeah yeah jim have you tried high v aisles i have not i mean essentially it's even better than amazon but i don't have a high v on my way home no no, no but high v aisles they deliver to your house for free <laughs> like you set the time so you get home at six and they'll come at six your wife yeah. gets home at three she'll look it's amazing like really? how, oh it's so simple i'm not sure where the, they have service zones um, I mean, maybe we are literally right across the street from Hy-Vee. Yeah, so we're, we're uh, the closest maybe, one. I mean, is, and there's not even maybe there is a minimum, but I think it's really low. I think it's like a hundred dollars, which usually Dude, I can park in the parking lot, walk into Baker's, grab two things of Gatorade. I do it every two weeks. Well, you know? yes, if you need one thing, but I'm talking like the full blown. Like when we need we need to restock everything, it's just easy. I not too true, true. Maybe I'm being lazy, but. I'm like, well, if it's the same product that I would normally buy, and then same what price? they're really good at 
uh, same exact price. Yeah. What they're really good at too is showing you the options of, hey, with this one, you'll get 20 cents of fuel saver. I am not joking you. I had 75 cents off on my fuel with the high V fuel saver because Hannah buys on there and they promote the stuff. And right. we have, we are not brand loyal when it comes to food. Right. Um, when it comes to certain other items we are, but when it comes to food, high V sure will take your brand and we rack in the fuel saver points. Yeah. Well, that's kind of nice right. to have that, that much per gallon when you're filling. Oh, up. it was awesome. I think I saved, I think it said $11 or something like that with yeah. the, that big Escalade oh, that you just bought. No, Traverse. I'm not fine. I don't drive an Escalade. I'm just joking. I wish I drove an Escalade. <laughs> I know you do. I know. I know you do. You you do the Escalade with the spinning. No, I would do the the Tahoe or the <laughs> Suburban. Actually, yeah. Suburban would be my ideal car. Right. Right. I want to guzzle just, gas, Jim. Just steal. I just want to steal, steal and guzzle way. gas. Just, and I, and I want to get rid of it in five years. And uh, yeah, yeah, you do. Seven miles to the gallon. I'm shocked that my Jeep, you know, Jeeps aren't, Jeeps, although known to be rugged, are not known to be great lasting a long time. And I have 175,000 miles and my Jeep is nine years old and it's still going That's great. pretty good. I think, I, I think that's the people that's I, I really gave people good. at work a ride to lunch today. And one of them asked like, Hey, like how old is this car? And they were shocked. Like, no way. They're like this thing's held together pretty well, and I'm like, well, yeah. wait till I tell you the amount of miles I have on it too, because my one job in college was I was a runner for a company, so ran documents and did errands for the CEO all day, and I put so many miles in that car in a short amount of time. So, yeah, it's held up pretty well. Yeah, that's what I'm at with my Honda. I just crossed over 180. I've never done anything to it, but tires, brakes, oil changes. Great. Those Civics, the Ford Focuses, those cars that are just very basic last so focus. long. Yeah. Oh, we had a brand my new wife, My wife had a Focus and it lasted and it really? drove better in the snow and it lasted forever. I don't know. They tend to work out pretty well. We had a Focus that had changed the brakes at 30. And that I was on, I was done. Like oh, okay. any car you get to 30 on and you're changing brakes, I was like, okay, it's out of here. But other gym, um, says yeah kroger which so bakers is owned by kroger here in in the omaha area um does pick up and my wife likes it yeah there's there's so many different store options mark do you guys do you guys take advantage of any uh, walmart or the local grocery store pickup uh, options other than Amazon? Delivery? <laughs> i mean we have we have peapod which is uh with stop and shop like stop and shop is our local like you know chain grocery store um but we don't really do any of that uh the main thing that we do is uh we actually use google express now and that delivers from costco um which really do you have to have a membership yeah. to start out with uh you don't need a membership but it costs extra okay if you don't have one if you have a membership then you get like I think it's close to the actual price, but I think some of the things are slightly more expensive. Gotcha. I think that's kind of how they make their money. Like you pay $5, like a flat rate delivery fee on whatever you order. And we ordered like the box that we got today was like four pounds of almonds, like 20 drinks, uh, like a bunch of almond milk. And I'm like, you know, trying to get the box in the house. That's a lot of almonds. <laughs> yeah. Well, Emily, Emily, when she's nursing, just goes through handfuls of almonds because she's just oh, like ravenous. Right. right. So, you know, <laughs> she's just, so she just has like almond stations around the house. So she's just like eating almonds, just raw almonds. Just like, right. So, yeah. So just all of that stuff, like, you know, it's cool that, you know, we don't have to worry about actually going to Costco, even though I'd love going to Costco. So I you're kind of like shopping. You said that. Oh, <laughs> likes going to Costco. Man, it is a I love zoo. Costco. At least the one by us is a zoo. There is no time it's not busy. You could go at 9.30 in the morning. You could go at 3 in the afternoon. It's still going to be busy. Which one Ours, is yours, Mike? The one on Dodge, 128th, 130th, maybe. Oh, over there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, ours by is usually... Yep, it's exactly. usually busy. It's usually busy, but it's not like... I I... The times that I go, it's never been like, okay, I'm not going to the next thing that I was going to do today because I'm going to be waiting in line. Like oh, I actually nice. used to, 
when I was when I was younger, I'd go with my mom because you know my mom would be like, "You want to go to Costco?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Like maybe you'll buy me like a, a TV or something. <laughs> and so I'd go and I'd be For like, "Oh my dollars. gosh." this line like i'm i'm just gonna go off to the free samples for like 20 <laughs> minutes and just make a loop and just That's keep getting character. keep getting the free samples like you know and I then gotta like, go get some don't pizza yeah or or even oh, even like going to the pizza. even going to their pizza and getting like a slice for a dollar um See you, Ken. you know yeah, like I, uh, we used to joke around. My mom and dad and I used to we used to go to Sam's Club because that's where it used to be close to us. Yeah. And we'd always say we're going to the club for lunch, and we <laughs> Sam's Club and got like the dollar hot dogs and stuff. But yeah. Like, oh yeah, we're going to the club for lunch. You know, we had the Sam's Club dollar hot dogs at Sam's. Dude, they're Man, good. I, they are delicious. <laughs> you know, I, can, I feel I kind of ten of those and go ten hot dogs deep at Sam's Club. <laughs> I kind of feel. I kind of feel ashamed saying that like I eat Costco pizza because you know I live in Connecticut and we have New Haven like right there which is the best pizza in the world. So is it know, really? It 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 is. I like I'm not you know being sarcastic. Like there are there there are people who say that it's the best pizza in the world. Like we have New York, New Haven, and then like Italy. Like those are like the three places. <laughs> and then Italy. <laughs> like it's and like that. We're leaving out Chicago. We're leaving out you know. Chicago's not real pizza. It, that's oh, a casserole. That's, that's a, a casserole. It's, it's lasagna, lasagna basically. basically. That's a pretty good point. It's, it's a, a it's a, a casserole. Lasagna. It's not a pizza. Um. <laughs> so what style I mean, is New Haven? Like how would you describe it? Because like I love New York style pizza. I think that's one of my favorite styles. So it's it's New Haven style pizza. What it basically is is. Um, you cook it in a ridiculously hot oven. Uh, the bottom is super crispy, and then like right above it, it's almost undercooked. So you get this like combination of chewy and crispy. That's it's unbelievable. Like it's it's okay. really really phenomenal. Uh, Frank Pepe's is the most famous um, of the chains, but uh, there's on Worcester Street in New Haven. There's um, Frank Peppy's and then there's Sally's, which is it was like his friend or cousin or something who just like got mad at him one day and then just opened up a place down the street. And like, you know, Frank Sinatra used to go there and like, you know, it was a whole thing. So um, yeah, those two places, and then there's a couple of like lesser known ones, you know, that we know because you know we're from Connecticut. Um, right. Like, there's this place called it's just called Bar, and they have really great pizza. And then there's Modern, which is another place that has the same style. And um, you know, any of those places, like you're ever in Connecticut for some reason, like go to New Haven, go to one of those places, um, and you won't be disappointed. I'm gonna do that. You know, but oh. that that's one of my favorite parts about Omaha too. Is like, okay, so we got steaks, right? Okay, besides steaks, besides meat, we're not known for anything, but we also have mm -hmm. the most restaurants per capita of like any city. So we get all of the good stuff. Like you can have anything here. You can literally have whatever you want. I'm surprised we don't have a New Haven pizza joint here, mm -hmm. and we probably do somewhere. Sure. But uh, it, it's the best part of living here because I don't care I, that we don't have anything special to us. We have everything. We can try anything here. I'm very, very skeptical that you have good pizza there. I, well, I, we get, I mean, actually, we, we get some pretty good pizza. We've got Zio's is styles. pretty good. Zio's is amazing. That's my New York style. I'm, <laughs> but, you know, I'm just, I'm so any, anywhere I've ever been, the pizza is worse. So I'm just always like, <laughs> it's not, it's not going to be as authentic. Maybe I'll give you that. Yeah. But, we do get all the good Taco Bell specials before anyone else does. <laughs> they, they, we're literally, we're a test city for drive through because we have the most per capita. So they, whenever Taco Bell, Burger King, McDonald's try something out, they'll put it here, we'll first. Get it here first. So we have all this weird stuff that no one else has. I'll go to a different that city and I'll try cool. and order something. And they're like, you have what? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's this thing you do in Omaha. Do you have like the taquerito quesadilla thing? And they're like, yeah, no, we don't have that. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's a combination of all your items into one. It's really good. <laughs> Just Mark, Mark wants to argue with blender. you. Mark says Montreal pizza is better. So okay, well, that's just objectively wrong. Like yeah, his, okay. <laughs> just his opinion is just oh, not correct. I'll come to New Haven and try it. I'm, I, uh, I love a good pizza. Yeah, and you know what? I have to say, um, 
I've eaten New Haven style pizza so much now that my favorite pizza isn't even in New Haven now, which I, you know, my favorite pizza is this place in New York uh, called Luzo's and they make uh, Neapolitan pizza. And that's just my favorite style of pizza. Mm. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, my wife and I actually just go there on our anniversary. Like we just drive into New York and we go to Luzo's for pizza. Um, how far and, of a drive know, we'll, is that for you from Connecticut? Uh, depending on traffic, it's an hour and a half to, you know, like apocalypse. <laughs> like <laughs> to infinity. Yeah. So you might not make it. That's always yeah. an option. There's the, always the option that you're not going to make it before you die. It's an hour yeah. to you're not going to make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, usually, usually when we go, it's fine. <laughs> To a that's funny the traffic, i can appreciate the traffic that here is bad like it's it's one of the it's one of the worst areas in the country like you know i i work my what the website that i work for um like we do a lot of local news but a lot of what we do is like finding those studies that have been like you know here is the worst place in the country for traffic where does connecticut rank and it's always like okay you know like washington dc like los angeles and then like the New York metropolitan area, which is us. And it's just like, oh yeah, it's 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 not good. And like I have to go down, uh, I'm going from Milford to Bridgeport right now. Um, Bridgeport is a lovely city. All the things you've ever heard about Bridgeport not are actually true. It's terrible. Um, but it's you know, it's like a 10 minute drive for me, and now I got to go down to Norwalk, which is roughly twice as far and it should only be 20 minutes but even i go at like two o'clock in the afternoon and there could be traffic like it just doesn't make any sense like it's just like oh yeah it'll just take me an hour to get there and it's like you know i'm like terrified for my job like you know when we we're talking about traffic alerts before like i'm actually going to need them now yeah and you got to pay for it right you're on the turnpike uh no no we don't have any tolls yet Oh, okay. Uh, our budget is in a complete shambles and it's terrible and we're probably going to have tolls, but as of right now, we do not. So that's not too bad. But yeah, we also have like some of the most expensive gas in the country too. So now I want some pizza. Like, yeah, yeah, me too. I'm wondering if I got some, I started thinking like, do we have any in the fridge anywhere? Or well, like, you, you I... said like cliff bars and like, I wanted a cliff bar as soon as you said that. <laughs> I was just like, I, oh, I'm man. really I hungry. I get the mint kind. I get the, you know, we use the Cliff Builder bar. So 20, I, after I work out, that's what I use. And mm. I get the mint ones. Man, there's nothing more refreshing than a solid workout <laughs> and just crushing chocolate <laughs> mint bar. I just, it's gone. I was like, I'm like, where'd it go? <laughs> what happened to it? I thought I was, I thought I was eating something and it's gone. Yeah. So, no, I have a, yeah. I have a very definite workout routine. When I get done, I go up to my office and I have a box full of Cliff Bars in my drawer, and then I pull a Cliff Bar, eat it while I'm clearing my email, and it could, that could take anywhere from ten minutes to infinity. But, <laughs> but you know, usually ten it's to apocalypse. Ten, yeah, I tend to apocalypse, and then uh, usually it's thirty, and then I'll um, head down, and I've got these Gatorades in the back of my car, and so I fill up a big glass on the way out with ice, and then. On my way home, I'm listening to a podcast and uh, guzzling Gatorade. So that's kind of my that's my workout routine. How much is gas there, Mark? You said that, and I got curious. Uh, I actually don't know because for the cheap stuff, uh, probably I think it's like two eighty something like that now. It is expensive. Sixty, yeah, it's more than ours. Or, yeah, or two nineteen for the cheap stuff. I think right now. Yeah. It's not even like that's yeah, seventy five percent tax <laughs> in Nebraska. You know, it's super. Our taxes are super high, and I bet a buck of that or more is taxes right now. Well, because we got the ethanol stuff too, right. though. Right. Corn, yeah, big corn state that helps. Oh yeah, just don't don't base your fuel on your food supply. That's never a good idea. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm I'm completely misinformed. Uh, it's actually only two twenty eight. So oh, not that's that not bad. That's not oh, yeah. That's yeah. actually really. Yeah, I just looked it up. I should have asked Google, but 
Or Jim, your Ooh. food food supply. I yeah, like your foods. And That's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah. ask Echo. Echo. What's the current price of gas? I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Mm, let's hey, Google. Try. Oh, go ahead. How much does gas cost near me? My apologies. I don't understand. She doesn't understand. No, that's not a good. That's right. Echo. What's the current price of gas near me? Hmm. I don't know that one. Mm. Let's try. How much well, is gas near me? There we go. I found 15 gas stations. <laughs> that's helpful. That that actually does that have the prices on there? Nope. Uh, hey, Cortana. How much is gas near me? Oh, open up a web page. See what I get though in Bing. Good old Bing. Mm, I got gasbuddy.com. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I just looked it up on my phone. But mm -hmm. uh, do you remember that there was a thing where like Microsoft was paying people to use Bing? Mm -hmm. I still do. They have rewards. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, it's I, not I have paid. Say... It's not paid, but it is kind of you know you can get rewards and trade in those rewards for other rewards that don't matter. <laughs> kind of thing. Stupid. Yeah, I I do the surveys, the Google surveys on my phone, um, and uh, I get you know like it gives you like twenty eight cents or something if you do a good one or like 10 cents um i don't know if you've ever if you do those or not but it's actually pretty cool because you can buy apps with them or hearthstone cards in my case which is what i oh, nice <laughs> spending on um i love I, hearthstone I, but i haven't spent a dime on it so i suck at it <laughs> i've i've spent an embarrassingly large amount of money on it um i i basically have a full collection it's such a fun game like yeah. it's so much fun. I still haven't hit legend. That's my that's my goal for being on paternity leave, which is oh, to hit okay. legend. Uh, I got to rank three last month because, like, on the last day, I I pushed with an aggro deck and like I got all the way to rank. I won like twenty games in a row, and I like got all the way to rank three, and then I started getting beat because everybody was playing counters to that deck, and yeah, it was kind of sad. Gotcha. Man. Blah blah. I have been. <laughs> yeah, just, I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna let him talk for a little like, bit. Wow, usually I I'm to, in the know, but I yeah, don't have no. a clue what you guys are talking about. I yeah, mean, I used to play Magic, and like that was that I understand. That was insanely expensive. Like, I uh, you know I played it when I was you know like 12, 13, 14, um, and my parents spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on me on cards and. I actually, uh, when I was getting married and like trying to pay for like the DJ and like all that stuff, like I went through my old cards and I like looked up like some of them. And I think I took a stack of like 20 cards or something to the comic shop, not like sold them on eBay or anything. And I got $500. Wow. From. Whoa. Yeah. Just like random, like stuff that I didn't even care about that was just like, yeah, you know, like I have, I had like three wastelands. It's like, okay, like that's a wasteland. What does that go for? It's like, oh, it's eighty dollars. And I'm just like, okay, I'm glad that I have these and I don't have them anymore because you just gave me eighty dollars for each yeah. of them. Well, my kids kept telling me these Pokemon cards would be worth mm -hmm. money. I should, I shouldn't have burned them. Maybe I should have. <laughs> some, some of them are worth money, but yeah, yeah they what, are. What I want though, okay, so my my only problem with that is I love games like that but I'm not willing to like keep putting more and more money into them. I want a game that I will pay $30 for 20, yeah. 30, whatever it is. And, and that's it. No one's allowed to put more <laughs> money in. So like, it's, it's like a me against you. We both paid, we both paid to play the game. What can we do with it? You know, that's why I still like, <coughs> it's so hard nowadays because I love sport games on Xbox. So I play Madden football and all that stuff. Even those games when you do Ultimate Team is still it's the same exact system. You're buying cards, you're buying, buying cards. Yeah. So if you put yeah thousand bucks into the game or a hundred or two hundred bucks in the game, you're going to be way better. And I was like, why can't we just all pay the same amount? Pay fifty, sixty. I don't care what I'm going to pay. I agree, it can't be free. Uh, but like I'll pay, but I want it to be even. <laughs> and I have yet to find a game that is like that, and I want one. One of one of the things about Hearthstone that like you can. If you spend a little bit of money, you can be competitive. Um, 
And but but not like win all the time, right? Like I want a game where I pay and I can yeah. I can just I if I'm that good at the game, I can just win. Like I think in Madden, if I am that good at Madden, I should just be able to win. But no, that's not the way it is. I think I think EA Sports kind of has a monopoly on like you know. Oh, they do. Let's let's figure out a way to make people spend a lot of money on these games. Like when I when that first came out, like I I'm a NHL guy. Oh, um, I love NHL too. too. Yeah. Me too. So. Yeah. They came out with Hut, you know, ultimate yep. like ultimate team on that, and like I was just addicted to opening packs. Like I almost didn't even want to play the game. You want to open like, the packs? I just want to. I'm like, okay, well, it's a dollar. Okay, you know, I'm just gonna buy a pack. I want to see who I get in it, and like see if I can assemble an entire, you know, New York Rangers team. Um, and like I would just do that, and then like. Well, it was the best part of our childhood, right? Like, what was the best part of our childhood? Yeah. It was going and grabbing either magic or Pokemon, whatever you're in, or baseball yep. cards or football cards, and seeing if you got a holographic or what you got in the pack. Yep. Like, it would it, yep. it it it's almost nostalgic for people our age, and and it's just and then it's also almost the casino mentality of just exactly that addiction and that dopamine hit. And I'm, I I, yeah, I, I love it too. Get, I still get excited when I open packs in Hearthstone and. Um, my wife has been like, you can't, you can't spend any more money on it. And I'm like, <laughs> it's you're right. cut off. <laughs> All right. You know, I, I, I agree. I need to stop, but like, you know, just even opening the free packs that you get, like you play tavern brawl or whatever, and you open a pack right. and then you click on it and explodes. And then there's, you know, yes. five cards you got to <laughs> click on and then you click and then like oh golden. It's like, Oh, like, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> everything's great now like yeah. i totally feel the same thing with madden because i've usually been playing the madden i'll do the free stuff to get a pack it's like a silver pack and i got i got a i got a 69 center all right like, yeah boom. <laughs> god i can't even imagine playing that game like just uh like you have to assemble an offensive line and it's like Oh, this is this is way too but, many. But cards. you know what the answer is? I just play Dynasty because I I, I have yeah. not spent any money on those. My, I uh, well, my wife doesn't let me. Um, <laughs> so so I just uh, I do the Dynasty and I'm stuck playing season modes. But those aren't the fun ones, right? Just like you said, opening the pack, all the addictive modes. Well, yeah, I mean the the one the thing for NHL was um you know the EA Sports Hockey League and like then they added the thing where it's like okay you got to pay for special gloves that make your guy better right and it's yeah. just like that's lame like You're that's like, this is too lame. much like real life the, yeah <laughs> <laughs> they started in NCAA football i remember a long time ago i mean i want to say maybe it wasn't maybe it was on 360 but you had to pay for like a recruiting pipeline like in your dynasty, your season, yeah. you couldn't get the best recruits because you had to pay for more states. And that was the first time that I ever saw that style of you know pay to play kind of games. And everyone was and you've so already paid shocked. Sixty dollars like, for yes, this game. That that was the point too on those. I have this is not some free app that I got on my phone that now I'm paying for the first time. Yep. But it's like oh, I already paid sixty bucks and let me play and have the full features, and it just does not exist anymore. It, it, everyone's so shocked at Candy Crush. I'm like, hey, at least you got the game for free and now you have to pay for extra lives. Like, imagine on Xbox or any other system where you're paying $60 and then they, they want more money. You know, I, I understand they're not being profitable because $60 is not enough for the amount of development that goes into those games and how little people buy those games anymore. But still. Well, the thing is they, they, they make a lot of money on that. And, you know, like... The, the ultimate team thing is where they make all of their money now. Oh, right. Yes. Exactly. And it's just, it's just been this thing that, you know, they've added on. But I like, I remember when uh, Diablo three came out and like they had the auction house on it. Yes. Yep. And I, I was like, okay, they have a real money auction house and they just, they ended up designing a game around it and it like completely ruined the game and the game's a lot better now. They patched it to like oblivion. But oh, did I they? Remember, Cause I, I played early yeah. Diablo three. I didn't play like late Diablo three. Yeah, now it's like like you know everything's just bound to your character, and you're just running around getting stuff like okay. getting loot all the time. But when it that first came out, like I was playing, and this helmet dropped, and I was like, "Huh, that's pretty good." Uh, let me put it up on the real money auction house, and I'll just uh, yeah, hundred dollars. Like, let's see what happens. And somebody bought it, so I bucks? sold I sold a helmet for a hundred dollars, and I bought the game for sixty dollars, and I got like eighty dollars of that. You know, after Blizzard took their cut, and I was right. just like, "Well, that paid for my game." 
<laughs> See, that's a good thing when you make money. Yeah. Though, that'd be a great feature. But, but it really it the basic thing of it ruined the game completely. I think it's it was really, like, yeah. I think it's ruined a lot of games completely. Like they yeah. realize that people. The, the problem is for people like you and me who are no longer allowed by our lives to pay for this sort of stuff. Like there are people out there who are going to pay. So why would these companies ever stop? There's no incentive for them to ever go back to the old model of we're going to charge a fixed price for the game that we think is fair, that we can make money and keep creating games for you and you'll pay for that, that, that whole model's over, you know, yeah. people, people are going to pay. So I just miss it. I miss the old days. I don't have enough time for me, even $60 on a game with how little time I get to play Xbox anymore. I rarely buy new games. Like I'll, I'll buy yeah. a few when all of our friends, like we have this group text of all my guy friends and we're all to the age. We're all like getting married, having kids. So it's like, okay guys, we got to pick one game in the next two years that our wives are going to let us buy. What game <laughs> is that going to be? So like, we'll take a survey. Like I really like COD. No, that's just a repeat of the, like the last five years. No. Okay. What game are we going to get? Uh, you know, so it's Jim has completely checked out of this conversation. He's, no, like, he's I'm, out. I'm he's checking out. plex while you guys were <laughs> there gaming. There you go. Yeah. Game nerding. Uh, I thought, hey, I wonder if I we should hijack get... the show, Jim. Yeah, I think we should get. Um, I think I should check and see. How's the live going? We should check into that. The, the Plex. Holy crap! Not I just I, I I wanted to say that the last game that I just played all the way through was uh, the new Zelda on the Switch. Um, oh, I'm jealous. <laughs> it's incredible. It's it really? so so good. I actually. And here's, so I played it on the Switch in the hospital while Emily was in labor. <laughs> so I didn't think she's going to be mad at you for admitting that. But I, uh, okay. Maybe, maybe, but she was like, you know, she was okay with it because it really is just like, you know, you need something to do. Oh, totally. I brought the Most, Chromecast yeah. and we watched Netflix the whole time. Yeah, like that's what we were doing. I brought, yeah. I brought my tablet. We were watching, you know, How I Met Your Mother or something. Yep. And, um, you know, she's just progressively getting more in pain. And I'm just like, well... I'm getting. Some I'm apples. almost done with the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Is it working? There we go. Live TV on my iPhone off Plex. Boom. Wow. That's right there. This is the. I, this is an NBA game, so it's a, it's a commercial right working now. Working decently. Um. Yeah. It, it, it fired up super fast. So I just went to the guide. I went okay. to program guide, and I chose the very first thing was was an NBA game. Um, is that? So, is that from your computer being casted to it or is it no like... it's the computer pulling it off the the plex server so it's, it's the phone pulling it off the ca the the plex server so the plex so, server is sending it and just sending it out to the phone yeah. yeah so you're streaming it from whatever their centralized yeah, thing is. yeah. whatever there however that however well that no not works. what the centralized thing is his computer and he's got an antenna running down and plugged into the computer so it's pulling it over the air off an antenna yeah into, oh, a, okay. yeah, into yeah, yeah, a digital yeah. tuner card and so yeah from these are digital tuners and i guess the i bought one of the new ones i the old i think i have two right i have four tuners total and i think the two older ones don't work with the plex yet but well hold on so i'm going to go to the guide i'm going to go to the program guide and so that's the program guide right now you can see i clicked on this one the mba okay. one right there but there's two and a half men or whatever that is uh, I can't watch that. So let's uh, let's go. Let's pull up news because this is what you could not um, you could not really get very well was local news on right. Plex unless you recorded it right. So this is Channel Three News right now. Mike, you will recognize Mike McKnight. Uh, this oh. gal. So it's buffering. Let's just see what it kind of takes. There we go. Oh, Boom. There we go. So there's the local news right now, the Omaha local news on Plex. Hey, that's pretty. Okay, so Jim, you, you mean you being a, so for me, I am not coming from any sort of Windows media server. Um, I am coming from cable, which at my end of my two years, I could cancel. For you though, is this better than your previous option? It's the same as Media Center for me now. So Media so Center, what app do you use on your phone to watch live TV? I don't. But could you? No. Um, no. I mean, I, I, so not in a in sense, is it a tad bit better? 
This is oh, this is way better. Yeah, are it you, is. Okay. Yeah, we're in. No, I'm in. Like this is it. This is it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I can watch anything local now. That's what off, I was wondering. If this is going to be, the I could switch moment. Yeah. No. Totally. I mean, this is. Yeah. This. This. Now, we'll have to see if the user experience on the front end for what Sarah does, because you should have to learn a new front end. Well, yeah, and we'll have to do our research to know what apps are getting updated. So where. Where are you plugging in your Plex? Is it on a computer upstairs? What does she watch uh, her Windows media? Yeah, she has her own computer on the TV. That that's what they run. You run it off of. Run. She runs Media Center off of that PC. So she would now just um, she would just connect a uh, connect to you Plex. Could do, you could do anything. You do a Fire Stick. You could do a Chromecast. You could do whatever you wanted. Yeah, right assuming now. those apps support it. Let's. We, we were messing around with. We this should look at that show. because my big. I have all. I, uh, Amazon Fire Sticks. I Mark? saw the I saw the cast button on that app. Like the there is. Oh yeah, no, totally. Yeah. You, totally yeah. you, you yeah. would Chromecast it. Yeah, right on. My right whole thing on. is I tried to. So I I was traveling a lot, Mark, and Jim knows the story. But um, I was traveling, and the, the first problem, right, is most hotel networks do not let devices connect to each other. So if I connect my Chromecast, it can't talk to my phone. So it was already out. So I started traveling with, it was a Hutu brand travel router. Um, and it, it worked decently. It creates your own private network. It can even bridge a wireless connection to the hotel into your own wireless connection. Um, but then, I, you know, I was traveling with that. So that was a pain. I started traveling with a Fire Stick. That thing, it plugs in. As soon as you turn it on, it'll say, hey, here's your Wi-Fi options. I, and so I click on the hotel Wi-Fi. It knows that there's a login page. And with the remote that comes with it, you can just like go through the whole login hotel web, you know, Wi-Fi page. It's, it was a dream. And I kind of liked having its own remote and the stick is only, you know, it's not the fire TV, it's the stick. So yeah, yeah, it was, it was have, awesome. Yeah. I actually have one of those. Oh, uh, you do? I yeah, so, do that. Oh yeah. So when you travel, if you, if you and Emily or wherever go to a hotel, take that thing. It's the best. Yeah, that's it, uh, that's pretty cool. We have um I I basically got it because uh I found out that you could install Kodi on it and as we we're talking right. before like yeah. you know I want to stream, you know, my the media that I have on onto my upstairs TV. Yeah. Um without having to use the computer, which is normally what I do like because the computer is just running upstairs anyway, but if like Emily's editing or something and I want to watch a show that I have downloaded like you know, I want to, I'll do it through the fire stick, but it just ends up being like, okay, yeah, I'm just using the Chromecast. Like we have a Chromecast on every TV in our house, except for the basement actually. Um, but that's really, you know, we're just using so much of the media that I have downloaded. Like, we'll, you know, watch movies or whatever. I mean, I like this thing, you know, like you guys, you know, oh, that's you're, actually, you're actually using the projector as a monitor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's cool. a hundred and 108 inches. So like, <laughs> you know, it's nice. It's That's a lot of gym. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> it's a little too much. Gym. Yeah, there's there's the projector up there. Yeah, a little so, too much gym. Give that to Sarah, Jim. She might like it. <laughs> <laughs> I need a life size portrait. I need a huge 108 inch portrait of Jim. Well, in yeah, I mean, you know, just doing like that. Like, oh man, like, oh wait, it's going infinite. Oh yeah, we just oh, yeah. <laughs> wait. So so that's Three you're casting simple. your Chrome tab. Then is what you're doing. Uh, no, no, I'm actually, uh, this is just the computer. Like, Oh, uh, that's just straight output from the computer. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's like, you know, it, like I said, it's super cool because I can, you know, use the computer upstairs and, right. uh, like I was playing, you know, I play Hearthstone on, on, on my couch, uh, that's which nice. you can do with a phone, but like, it's not as good. And you know, it's, you know, I can use like the deck tracker stuff and like all that stuff. Right. But, um yeah so yeah i have this i have this whole setup like if emily has the tv on upstairs she can be watching what i'm doing like you know while i'm doing it like that's one of the cool things about that switch is you can have two things that are the okay, same right and like yeah. running it both to both things or you can have like a different one and whatever like if i had a chromecast plugged into this like i could you know have it going upstairs and like going to here and whatever but Right. Um, My only complaint about the uh, Chromecast audio is that they you can't select multiple outputs. I don't think can you? So, for uh, example, the, I want like whole home audio where I can select zones, which you can't zone 
Audi. You can I, do I, that now. You, you can, can now? do that. Okay, yeah, so I only I, have one of them because I only bought. I have one for our outdoor patio area, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But the only reason I didn't buy more at the time was because that wasn't an option. So if that's an option now, that that might be my solution. That is just more Chromecast audios. Yeah, I you know I don't want to I don't want to hundred percent like Google this we'll before yeah, you yeah. buy we'll, it. Oh yeah, we'll have to Google it. But even if you, I mean, they're thirty bucks. That it was the best solution for that outdoor patio to have music out there. So yeah, I'm I'm looking at getting. Um, so like we have our attic right above all of our rooms and like, if I wanted to, I could just cut holes in the ceiling and put <laughs> speakers there and yeah. then like put an amp connected to a Chromecast audio and then like have like ceiling speakers. Of, you and like, me on the same page. That's my next project. <laughs> what that it's like the dream. And I'm just like, okay, you know, I can't justify being like, okay, like four Chromecast audios and then like right. sets of speakers and then like run the wiring upstairs. Like I can't, I can't justify doing that, but yeah. I want to oh, really bad. Really I just ran bad. a, uh, so my server acts in the basement and we have a ranch style home. So it's basement unfinished main floor and then attic. And so I finally ran a PVC pipe actually through this closet, the guest room closet. And so that I can just run my cables easily now from attic to basement just shove a cable down there because it was such a pain because for that exact reason so now i wire all my ethernet up there throw some ap's in the ceiling if i want to stereo stuff it's like all ah, i just want to but i can't just yeah. the cost either yeah. even the cost of like really nice access points nowadays is just like okay the one i have right now the apple airport extreme i have now is good enough right like it's it sends out a good enough signal. So how can I justify spending another 350 or $500 on access points on a ranch style house? <laughs> yeah. I mean the, I, I have, uh, I think a TP link, like whatever the wire cutter recommended is the router to get. Yeah. Well, my, and my router. router is separate. My router is a PF sense router downstairs. So I literally just need the access point, just the wireless. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess that's so the routing, the routing functionality on the airport extreme is turned off. It's just an access point. So, yeah, so I, I, you know, I actually, I got like one of those for my dad because my dad had an iPhone, like the um, the $100 one. What's the airport? Express. Express. Yep. Yeah, so I did that so that he could run music to his deck through iTunes. Oh, yeah. That's what yep. he used. That's what I did for my parents too. Yeah. And then I was just like, you know, once the Chromecast audio came out, like I have one and it's not hooked up anywhere because of the Google Home because like that's just my speaker now. Right. And like I'm not in the basement enough now to like have that and interestingly enough i had it in the basement hooked up to my speakers down here because my old hdmi switch didn't have audio out when the like the hdmi is off and this one does so like oh. any sound that's coming out of the computer will play even if the projector's off or like the upstairs is off or whatever yeah. which create some weird situations when like the computer volume is too loud and I'm like playing something and then I can hear it in the basement, but not hear it upstairs. And like, oh, that's kind of yeah. weird. But like if I'm having a party or something down here and like, you know, I have my bar over there and you know, like all that stuff and you know, people are hanging out. I'm like, I just want to put some music on. Like I can do that and not have to turn anything on. Like I'll just use, like you said, team viewer, you mentioned that, like, I'll just use that remote into my computer, turn some music on and then like do it yep. that way. But so yeah, I just have the Chromecast audio just like sitting there and I'm like, I want to put it in like my bathroom. Like that's like my dream is to be able to be like, you know, Google turn on some music in my bathroom and then like go take a shower and just be able to listen. Like, but now I'm just like, Oh, well I have the baby. So I feel like shower with the door open and like <laughs> yes. listen to see if he woke up. So it's like, I can't even, I can't even listen to music unless That's he's me like too. He's in his little rocker right there, and he's I'm just like I have to peek out. You doing okay? Okay, cool. Yep. <laughs> yep. And speaking of that, I kind of have to go to bed. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah. Hey, hang tight for one sec, guys. Yeah. Thanks for hanging around. You guys, hang tight for just one second. Uh, if you're listening on Spreaker, I want to thank you for coming out tonight. I'll let you guys go. And then uh, folks that have stayed around, and a bunch, a few of you, we had quite a few stay around. There's eight or nine still <laughs> hanging out there. We'll catch you back next week. Remember, our change next week. We'll see you guys.